Since time immemorial, the Galactic Republic has sprawled across known space, from Coruscant in the core to Tatooine in the Outer Rim. It has brought civilization to the furthest star, the light of democracy to millions of worlds, peace and prosperity to many. For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights have been guardians of peace and justice throughout the Galactic Republic. Symbols of hope, heroes of the downtrodden, rescuers of the unfortunate. Every Jedi is powerful and knowledgeable in the Force, an ever-present energy that surrounds, penetrates, and binds everything in existence. It is said to be a two-sided entity, with a light side aligned with honesty, selflessness, mercy, and positive emotions, and the dark side aligned with wrath, greed, passion, and negative emotions. The Jedi Code, which governs the behaviour of the Jedi, allows only the use of the light side of the Force. Committed to lives as warrior monks, Jedi are subject to an array of rules intended to keep them from falling to the dark side. They are taught to restrain themselves, are forbidden significant possessions and from having relationships. There is great capacity for evil in the dark side, a path of perennial bloodshed and never-ending ambition. Count Dooku, once a powerful Jedi himself, has left the Order and spearheaded this secession of disgruntled worlds from the Republic, forming the Confederacy of Independent Systems. The Jedi are warriors now, peacemakers, sent to lead the Republic's armies and fleets against the Separatists, who seek nothing more than to bring down the Republic. They have more than a good chance. Demilitarized for centuries, not even the introduction of a hidden clone army could stalk the Separatist tide at first. Now, the war is at a stalemate. A gridlock Senate agrees on only one thing, to grant Supreme Chancellor Palpatine further powers, in the hope that he can end the war swiftly. As the Jedi overextend themselves across the war's many fronts, in the shadows lies an even more concerning threat than the Separatists. The Sith, the ancient enemy of the Jedi, have resurfaced, long after they were thought extinct, heralding two decades of turmoil. For the Sith reject the light side, and feed upon the dark side for their goals of utter domination. A powerful Sith Lord now continually seeks to engineer the downfall of the Jedi and of the Republic. Entities whose existence are as anathema to him as the Sith are to the Jedi. The Force is clouded now, and the Jedi, who have always drawn upon it for guidance and strength, grow more troubled and confused by the day. The age of the Republic and of the Jedi is about to end. Pain erupts through your body as you awaken. Surrounding you is a protective canopy of foliage, the greenery obscuring anything from view, anything that the moonless darkness does not already hide. Yet more enveloping is are the senses around you, what the senses are telling you. Something metallic rests bitter and foul in your mouth, but the smells, they are the ones you realize you know well. Machine oil, singed plant material, charred flesh, death. The force is with you, always and now it threatens to overpower your senses. Urgency boils within its currents, echoing around tires that tell of death, not just nearby but across the galaxy, of murder across thousands of planets with an intensity you have never felt before. It is almost enough to make you weep, a wave of the likes you have never felt in your time as a Jedi. Choose one rank. Padawan. Remember, the Force will be with you, always. Even as your head swivels to search for danger, as your heart pumps in panic, your hand instinctively reaches for your braid. Good, it's still there. You remember your master's teachings. Calm yourself and reach out. You are a Padawan, a young Jedi in training, apprentice to a more senior Jedi. They, your master, are responsible for your upbringing and education, though perhaps no longer. You hurriedly search for your master through the bond which has been forged between the two of you. You are unsure of what you find. Start with 245 points. Must take one knight or master as your current master. Can take one knight or master for half price. Knight. Dub thee I do, Jedi Knight of the Republic. You still, hawk-eyed and prepared to spring into action. Certainly you will not be surprised. You reach out for the force, calming yourself and scanning your surroundings. You are a Jedi Knight, of the rank of the majority of the Order, without a Padawan's braid. 
Your control of the Force is strong, but you do not have mastery of it yet. For the past few years, you have traversed the galaxy, attempting to keep the peace and fighting the Separatists that would seek to break the Republic. Start with 280 points. May take one advanced Force power. Must take one faction as enemy with points. Can designate a Padawan as your current apprentice. Can take a Padawan for half price. Master. I am a Jedi, one with the Force, and it is always my ally, my guide. You focus yourself immediately, instinctively. Calm floods through you, and you see your surroundings without any risk of being surprised. You are a Jedi Master, the highest rank in the Order, short of becoming a member of the Jedi Council. Through years of experience, and the act of taking an apprentice of your own, the governing body of the Jedi have granted you with this prestigious title. It acknowledges your power in the Force, your individual strength, and your accomplishments. Start with 275 points. May take two advanced Force powers. Must take two factions as enemies with points. Can designate a Padawan as your current apprentice. Can take a Padawan for half price. Assured that you are in no immediate danger, you emerge from your green hiding spot and into the death-stricken scene before you. Bodies lie broken around you. Telltale wounds inflicted by a lightsaber making their manner of death and their killer clear. Nearby, the remains of what appear to be speeder bikes are scattered around. From your faint recollection and from the scene, you understand that you were ambushed. Though you had fought off your opponents, an explosion, whether from the speeder bikes or from explosives, knocks you out after the fact. Satisfied, you check yourself over and find yourself relatively unharmed, save for some scratches and burns. You take out your first aid kit and patch yourself up. As you do so, you can imagine what would be your fuzzy visage reflected off a polished metal engine fragment, a burning bit of foliage providing light. Choose a species type, if not a species. Human. Free. You are a human, member of a species that is the most populous and most dominant throughout the galaxy. Some of the Order's best were human, but also some of the most controversial despised. Current human Jedi, however, will inevitably be compared to the Order's Golden Boy, the Chosen One who is supposed to bring balance to the Force, Anakin Skywalker. Near human. Minus two points. Your form is similar to that of a human, but not entirely. Near human species differ greatly in appearance, but are almost ubiquitous as humans themselves. Ranging from the highly similar, like the Cephi, or the vastly different, like the Sulistans, Near humans are generally those which have evolved in some way from baseline humans, though they may be genetically unrelated. Mammalian. Minus four points. The visage you see is that of a non-near human mammalian. Mammalians count among themselves some of the other more dominant species in the galaxy. Though much of this is due to the influence of near human species, there is no shortage of non-human mammalian species. These include significant species like the Bothans or Wookiees, or somewhat more obscure species like the Yakora. Reptilian. Minus four points. Given by some a reputation of being involved unseemly affairs, the reptilians of the galaxy like you have left their mark upon it. Most notable of these are the Duros, famed navigators who were among the first to venture into space. Other reptilian species include the shape-shifting Claudites, and species like the Rodians and Trandoshans, who are often bounty hunters and mercenaries. Aquatic. Minus four points. You see a form adapted to living in water. Whether mammalian, amphibious or otherwise, various aquatic species are prevalent throughout the galaxy, notably the Mon Calamari and Quarren of Moncala, and the Nautolans of Gli Anslam. While not necessarily known for their galactic political clout, the Jedi Order has had many powerful members of these species. Other. Minus 10 points. With the galaxy so large, there are surely more than the 20 million species that the Republic allegedly knows of. With such a large number, categorization is exceptionally difficult. From insectoids like the Genotians to avians like the Mrilsili, there are all manner of species like yours that do not fit into the other major categories. This also includes rare hybrids and those with exceptional 
natural advantages. Exemplar races. The below races show examples of the above types of species. You may choose any, but must still pay the associated point cost. Twi'lek. Near human species. Considered attractive and crafty, Twi'leks are a ubiquitous race who range from dancers to strategists. Togruta. Mammalian species. A largely communal species, Togruta are tranquil and stubborn with a legacy as pack hunters. Faleen. Reptilian species. Cold blooded biologically and in spirit, the Faleen have skin which varies in colour depending on their mood. Duros. Reptilian species. Adventurous but reserved, Duros are adept pilots and navigators. There are many near Dorosh races, like the cunning Nymodians. Fosh. Other species. Rarely observed, the avian Fosh are shy and secluded due to their frail nature. Others should not disregard their manipulative nature, however. Miraluca. Near human species. Identical to humans, but for their lack of eyes, the thoughtful Miraluca perceive by the Force. Ethorian, mammalian species. Two mouthed and four throated, Ethorians are peaceful and in tune with the environment, yet their scream can blow out eardrums. Sleesi, reptilian species. An ancient race, the half humanoid, half Serbatian Sleesi are relaxed and known for their skill at repairing. Aqualish, aquatic species. Considered aggressive and crude, the Aqualish have hair trigger tempers and are inept at operating machines. Chagrian, aquatic species. An amphibious species with an inherent resistance to radiation, Chagrians are generally law abiding and intellectual, prioritizing education. Solustan, near human species. Friendly but practical. Solustans have an exceptional sense of direction. They are known as pilots and traders with a clan based society. Deveronian, mammalian species. A species with significant sexual dimorphism, male Deveronians are horned and aggressive, but females more passive and hornless. Nicto, reptilian species. With many subspecies, the Nicto vary in appearance. Largely a slave or client race of the huts, the free Nikto are guarded and independent. Selkath, aquatic species. Now were lost isolationist species. The Selkath that have emerged from Manan are far sighted, having moved away from the peaceful nature of their people. Jawa, other species. Diminutive, the rodent like Jawa are passive but business oriented scavengers considered by some to be crooks. As you try to proceed further, your wounds ache harder than you'd expected, and fatigue overcomes you. Reaching out for the Force's guidance, you only make your way to a place that calls out to you as being safe. Though you try to trust in the Force, your honed survival skills and combat instincts guide you as well. Eventually, you settle down in the shrouded cave for the night, having sensed no danger nearby. Yet despite your effort to calm yourself, Great pain still wraps you in its grip. Taking a deep breath, you attempt to meditate, but it is harder than you expected. Finally, you decide to take a chance. Attempting to center yourself, your mind goes back, back before the dark times, when this all started. This is the end of the Age of Heroes, a chapter in a tale spanning eons. This is your part in that story. Choose one, male, female. Author's note. Mechanically this is a point based choose your own adventure, but it is RP slash fluff orientated. You will most likely have to specialize or become a jack of all trades, however don't let it stop you from pulling off the story you want. You can take this choose your own adventure as starting before the Clone Wars, during it, or right after it. Origin. The Jedi were brought together from all across the galaxy. By the time you were initiated, the Order was concentrated on the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, the Ecumenopolis capital of the Galactic Republic. 
Mandated to control Force sensitives across the galaxy, Jedi recruiters were set forth to find Force sensitive children and take them to the Order to ensure that they did not fall to the corrupting influence of the dark side of the Force. You were among them, destined to grow up as one of the some 10,000 Jedi in the galaxy. Before that happened, you were taken away from your family. Choose one. Baby. Plus two points. You have only known the Jedi Temple. The bronze statues of past heroes, walls of marble, the running water in the room of a thousand fountains. They are what you see when you think of home. You know no other family but the Jedi Order, for you were taken in as a baby, whether because you were orphaned or because your biological parents gave you up. Take one intellectual skill for free. Infant. Free. You have faint memories of your parents, but only so much. Taken in at around the same age of most other Jedi, you were old enough to walk and talk simply, but little more than that. Instead, most of your childhood was in the temple, where you found a surrogate family, irritating and affectionate siblings amongst the other younglings, the masters for parents. Take one covert skill for free. Child. Minus two points. You are one of a relative rarity in the Order, though by no means special in this instance. Only discovered by the Jedi recruiters at the age of six, you were already close to your family, and leaving them would leave a scar upon you. While not enough to define you, those years were enough to mark you as more rebellious than your peers, as you struggled to fit in. Take one martial skill for free. Homeworld. Spread across the galaxy, the region your homeworld was located in had a profound effect on your formative years, though you did not spend enough time with your parents to learn much before you were taken to the Jedi. Their attitudes and the environment affected your character. Those with origin baby must take homeworld, the temple. Choose one homeworld. The temple requires origin baby. Raised entirely at the Jedi temple, you had a head start in learning use of the force. Take one basic force power for free. The Core Worlds Raised in the core, the heart of civilization, the underhandedness of life on most worlds rubbed off on you. Take one top row covert skill for free. The Colonies The economic powerhouse of the galaxy, its citizens are a frugal people who have become very wealthy. Take ten points to spend on equipment only. The Inner Rims Between the safety of the core and danger of the Outer Rim, moderation was imparted on you in your youth. Take one top row intellectual skill for free. The Outer Rim Dangerous and far from safe, your childhood was difficult and full of struggle, regardless of your family's wealth. Take one top row martial skill for free. Perks as you grew older and developed, the Masters taught you that everyone has the Force within them, connecting them with others. That everyone is special in some way, and that death of any life form is a loss for the universe as a whole. You were taught to respect others, work together, but be self-reliant. Be ready to take lives, yet avoid conflict where possible. You were taught to be selfless, and to act as a guardian of civilization. In those years, you compared yourself with your fellow younglings through competition in your clans and on a personal basis. As your younger years passed, you noticed that there were certain aspects about you that made you stand apart from the others. Choose any number of perks. Adaptable. Minus 10 points. You do easily with change no matter the form it takes. You are unperturbed by sudden difficulty, quickly thinking of new ways to cope. As a planner, you can rapidly adjust them to deal with unexpected circumstances. As an individual, you are fast in responding to situations that leave you flat-footed. Agile. Minus 10 points. You are a naturally agile individual, with great natural athleticism. You can contort well, have a smoother range of movement, and your balance and coordination are superior to most. Additionally, you are stealthier and a more dangerous combatant. Attractive. Minus 10 points. You are considered rather attractive in general, and receive looks from others. This will give you an edge over those who are attracted to you. However, remember that the code discourages attachment and reckless passion, and that deception is not an act Jedi should perform easily. 
Charismatic. Minus 10 points. You were born with a silver tongue, one capable of stirring hearts and swaying the suspicious. You already stumble on words and get your points across quickly and eloquently. This is separate from diplomacy, persuasion and leadership, which deal with the long-term intricacies of those skills. Idelic Memory. Minus 18 points. One of a select few in the galaxy, you possess an idelic memory. With the force and the ability to sense emotions or obtain visions, this makes you especially potent. At the same time, you must deal with being unable to forget painful memories or sensations, a task which is even more extreme for force sensitives. Energetic. Minus 10 points. You are an inherently active person. Outgoing, upbeat, and always ready to go. You are hard to tire and always up for a challenge, especially of the physical sort. Your nature also rubs off on those around you, stirring the slothful into work and the doubtful into action. Fast learner. Minus 14 points. As you developed, you noted that you consumed and understood information faster than others, outpacing your peers. You are considerably faster at learning than others, including learning to control the force. You are also faster at reading. Kind. Minus 10 points. You are a naturally kind individual, with a helpful, caring and compassionate demeanour. You make friends easily, and readily keep them as a result. However, you are no less powerful or effective a Jedi. Natural Warrior. Minus 15 points. You were born to be a warrior, possessing that special something that makes you so much better in a fight. That factor that can make you stand out from the rest. You are faster, more accurate, more lethal. You are considered to have potential comparable to the Order's best at lightsaber combat. Patient. Minus 10 points. Cannot take with complication in patience. You are known for your calmness for how difficult it is to force you into acting recklessly. You are more likely to resist any urge, whether from within or without. You are prepared to wait to fulfill whatever is required of you no matter the burden or time. Powerful. Minus 15 points. Cannot take with complication, weak. You are strong in the Force, and you readily feel its currents with every motion. You can channel it more strongly and to greater effect. Your ability to study it is easier than for most, though you feel its negative currents more strongly. Relentless. Cannot take with complication, defeat. Nothing can keep you down. While you still draw breath, while you can still do something, you will never be stopped from completing your goals no matter how dire the odds may be. You will keep going, and you will never give up. Serene. Minus 10 points. Cannot take with complication, tempestuous or complication, wrath. A naturally calm and relaxed individual, you find it easy to centre yourself and achieve inner peace. You are hard to anger, and your composure makes it easy for others to trust and follow you. Strong. Minus 10 points. Cannot take with complications. Sickly. Though strength is not that important to Jedi with the Force, you are particularly physically strong. This is especially useful in overpowering opponents and in acting without use of the Force. Tough. Minus 10 points. Cannot take with complications. Sickly. You were born with a natural toughness capable of withstanding much greater punishment and pain than most others, and a considerably longer period. You also heal at a faster rate, both naturally and assisted. Wise. Minus 10 points. Cannot take with complication, impatience. You are considered wise for your age. You often find a way out of difficult situations, are aware of your limits, and have a profound inherent understanding of the Force. Complications. At the same time, however, you realise that there were certain things about you which were not necessarily so good, that though all were considered flawed, you may have had some that were particularly notable. Despite your master's efforts, you still retained them. Other complications you gained later in your career as a Jedi, the consequence of some event or series of events that ended up making carrying out your duty as a Jedi more difficult. Those with complications from the first row, or have attachment, are more susceptible but not necessarily fated to fall to the dark side of the Force. Choose any number of complications, up to a maximum of five. Arrogance. Plus eight points. 
The Order extols confidence in oneself and the Force, yet some thought that you took it too far. Just a mumbling of little people. You carry yourself with an arrogance that is clearly evident and which is an impediment to your work and control of the Force. Impatience. Plus eight points. You are reckless and impatient, to the point of it being dangerous. Plans go awry as you launch them preemptively, and have a habit of running into ambushes. Finding it hard to remain still, meditation is difficult, reducing its effectiveness and that of healing trances. Phobia. Plus eight points. You well know that fear leads to the dark side of the Force, but you possess a deep-seated enough phobia that resists your Jedi training. Ingrained within you, it does not fail to control you at critical moments, and you rarely find solace in sleep or meditation. You may be plagued with dire ruminations. Greed. Plus eight points. Jedi are meant to have few possessions, as is it is felt to be distracting and a burden. For you, that could not be further from the case. The Order does not condone waste. You display much greater greed than is appropriate for a Jedi, enough to be compromising. Wrath. Plus eight points. You are much quicker to anger, and efforts to reduce it are largely unsuccessful. Furthermore, you are considerably more violent when enraged and remain angry for a longer period of time. You may unintentionally use the dark side of the force during these periods. Attachment. Attachment, plus ten points. You are overly attached, too attached, for Jedi standards, to someone or something. Relationship, minus three points. You are secretly involved in a serious relationship with someone else, an act that outright violates the Jedi Code, and may result in your expulsion if discovered. Relationship requires attachment, count as one complication. Defeat, plus six points. In your past, one particular event has anchored its place in your memory, and that of others. A particularly galling and devastating defeat occurred under your watch. Your reputation, and potentially your body and mind, is forever marked by it. Bad influence. Plus eight points. One of your associates is considered a bad influence upon you, encouraging you to do things that are against the belief system of the Jedi. The Council frowns upon this, believing that they may cause you to fall to the dark side of the Force. This does not have to be an associate from the associates section. Weak. Plus 15 points. You were only selected to become a Padawan by merit of your master picking you before you were reassigned to the Jedi Service Corps. You are markedly less powerful in the Force than those of comparable Asian rank, and your lack of potency in the Force is well known within the Order. Sickly. Plus 15 points. Possessing some condition that makes you weaker than most people, attempts to cure or relieve it by Force healing have not been successful. Consequently, you are weaker and have worse coordination than others. This malady also has the habit of kicking in at the worst possible times. Amputee, plus 15 points. It may have been due to your own folly, or due to combat. While modern prosthetics are highly capable, for a force user it is not necessarily the same. Flesh replaced with something foreign. Though you have since adapted, you have no doubt that with a part of you irreparably lost, your power in the Force may have diminished. Senseless, plus 15 points. Though losing a sense would be a major blow to most people, for Jedi it is not so great an impediment. Force sensing can regardless compensate for the loss of a sense, still, it can take some time to adapt. Cannot lose senses if they are inherent to a species, e.g. Miralukas, cannot take senses blind. Rebel. Plus six points. You are a rebel in the eyes of the Jedi Council, far from a muddled Jedi. Whether true or not, you are often saddled with the worst and dullest assignments, and slow to be promoted. This does not necessarily mean a conflict in ideology, though that can apply. Tempestuous. Plus thirteen points. Requires a complication for the first row or attachment. Within you, a storm rages, threatening to overcome your barriers. You are trapped on the edge between light and dark, and a single misjudgment could send you over the edge into unfathomable darkness. Deadly Secret. 
plus 22 points. You possess a deadly secret which, if well known, could result in your death or being hunted across the galaxy. Perhaps you possess a Sith holocron, or a clone has entrusted you with information about the orders of the clone army. Regardless, should this be known, your life will never know rest again. The Force As a Force sensitive, you are one of a tiny percentage of people who can manipulate the Force. Through that, you are capable of helping untold numbers, yet also capable of bringing ruin to an even greater amount. The Order's purpose is to educate its charges, and teach them how to use the Force for the good of all. It, under the authority of the Jedi Council, the governing body, requires its members to follow the Jedi Code. The Jedi Code outlines the behaviour of Jedi, seeking to prevent them from falling to the dark side. But in these dark times, the Code is more contested than ever. Divergent points of view, some returned from the distant past, have arisen in response to what some see as an obstinate refusal to change with the times. They have also arisen in reaction to the Jedi's increasing militarization and their role in galactic politics. Some say the Jedi have lost their way. Others, that the Jedi are not doing enough to combat chaos. Few, if any, Jedi would proclaim themselves to be ideal. The Jedi Code, after all, warns against arrogance. Yet equally, that surely also applies to one's adherence of the Jedi Code and its effects on others. As you grew up and honed your skills as a Jedi, you became aware of the philosophical and ideological disagreements that was occupying the Order's members. Some insisted on tight adherence of the Jedi Code, others, finding the Code restrictive or ineffective, advocated different points of view, some in opposition of each other, some in opposition to the established state of affairs. Caught up in such an environment, you inevitably develop views of your own, as inevitably as you grow stronger in the Force. Darksiders should choose Major Heterodoxy. See Nose Page for additional details on this section. Choose one view on the Force and the Order. Typical. Free. Though you follow the code as best you can, you admit you do not follow it utterly. You might consider the Jedi Order in either some degree of reform or not. But you do not have any particular different opinions about the Order or its code, nor divergent opinions on the nature of the Force. If anything, you may be uncertain of what is best for the Order in the future. Generally, you are a moderate. Code Doctrine. Plus 10 points. The code was laid down and adhered to by generations of Jedi. To divert from it is to be arrogant and dangerous. You are a strict adherent of the Jedi Code in its most fundamental form. This close following of the Jedi Code may demonstrate great self-control and draw on you plaudits from traditionals. However, in doing so, you have rubbed off poorly among your more divergent fellows. Living Force, minus two points. Emphasizing how the Force exists and penetrates everything, adherents of the Living Force focus on living in the present rather than focusing upon the ever-changing future. Thus, they recommend acting on instinct rather than to rely on prophecy, prediction, or rules laid down millennia ago. Living Force adherents in the Order still largely operate within the framework of the Code. Unifying Force, minus two points. Followers of the Unifying Force emphasize how the Force unites everything in existence, from every star to every mind. A more abstract philosophy, they focus upon gaining greater understanding. To achieve this, they favor interpreting visions to attempt to gain greater understanding. They are opposed in belief to adherence of the Living Force, focusing on the wider scheme of things. Other Heterodoxy, minus ten points. You possess divergent opinions on the nature of the Force or the Order, and by ones that are not considered particularly dangerous. Fundamentally, you still believe in the light-dark divide and the primacy of the light, though you may be more reformist, traditionalist, or just hold odd opinions. Regardless, in these dark times, the Council is, reluctantly, willing to work with you. Major Heterodoxy. Minus 15 points. Privately, you hold beliefs in the Force that would be considered extreme by the Jedi Council. Beliefs antithetical to the Order's existence and purpose, and which, if known, may result in your expulsion or arrest. These include greater acceptance of the dark side or non-sided views in the Force. Still, your opinions, though not publicly known, influence your actions enough that there is some suspicion. Archetype. Charge the roles of peacekeeping and meditation, 
the Jedi employ a variety of strategies to ensure a fruitful resolution to crises. Not all Jedi are born warriors. Not all are born with an extremely tight connection to the Force. Three major philosophies roughly divide the Order, determined by the individual's temperament, skill, and attitude towards problem solving. You inevitably fell into one of these roles over time. Choose one archetype. Jedi Guardian. Committed towards the defense of the Jedi Order and of innocence across the galaxy, Jedi Guardians go forth from the temple to combat the dark side wherever it may appear. Though strong in the Force, Guardians emphasize physicality and open combat and are the Order's finest warriors. Jedi Consular Not all Jedi excel at combat. Many are devoted to the more theoretical and mental fields of the Force, fulfilling crucial roles behind the scenes. Jedi Consulars cover a wide range of responsibilities to combat the dark side from afar. They are diplomats, researchers, and healers. Take two intellectual skills for free. Jedi Sentinel. Combining both physical prowess and mental fortitude, Jedi Sentinels are much rarer than they were in the past, but fill important niches in the knees of the Order and the Galaxy. They serve a variety of roles, from Temple Guards to those Jedi that specialize working undercover. Take two covert skills for free. Basic Force Powers Being so all-encompassing, the Force can be used to perform many things. Manipulation of the Force can be roughly divided into a few categories. All Jedi are trained to use the Force to a basic level at the very least, with some specialising in certain powers to fill their needs. You are not required to take these powers to use them. Acquiring them here denotes above average manipulation of the Force Power. Choose any number of basic force powers. Telekinesis, minus 10 points. The manipulation of objects with the force, telekinesis is a basic force power that has a wide array of simple and more complex applications. As power increases, so does the lift weight. Force barrier, minus 10 points. Using the force to create a shield of force energy around a target, force barrier can result in visible or invisible shields. Force barrier is a very basic technique. Force Sense, minus 10 points. Currents in Force allow one to sense one's surroundings as well over long range. Additionally, this covers use of the Force to act reflexively in combat situations. Force Control, minus 10 points. By channeling the Force through their body, the user can achieve superhuman feats of strength and agility, typically through sprinting or jumping great distances. Force Confusion, minus 10 points. The Force may be used to confuse or persuade the weak-minded, though Jedi are taught not to dominate. At its strongest, it can make groups ignore the user's presence, as if they were invisible. Force Healing Minus 10 points Force Healing is the use of the Force's connection to all living things to accelerate the rate of natural healing, but can also be used to staunch fatal wounds through enough training. Force Empathy Minus 10 points Force Empathy is the detection of sentiments and feelings of other individuals, both specifically and in general. At its best, it can unearth tightly suppressed motivations. Mental Shields, minus 10 points. Mental shields are employed near constantly against mental attacks. Advanced users can resist prolonged attacks, but also elude actively searching Force users. Farsight, minus 10 points. Farsight is the use of extreme concentration to see from afar, from enemies to friends in danger. It is also related to the obtaining and interpretation of visions. Advanced Force Powers Stronger, more devastating Force Powers require years of advanced study and no insignificant amount of control over the Force to be employed. However, these powers stretch the boundary of what is possible with the Force and are game changers if applied wisely. The Jedi Order strictly monitors the powers its members use, and have made a number of techniques forbidden or discouraged. Some are also considered overly flashy, excessive and inefficient. Still, of those available, there are many potent powers that many will never master in their lifetime. Major Heterodoxy allows Padawans and Knights to unlock advanced force powers locked to a higher rank of Jedi. Knights can also unlock a master locked advanced force power for use for Holocron. Masters have all advanced force powers unlocked for purchase. All ranks of Jedi can purchase more advanced force powers than their rank limit using holocrons from equipment. The advanced force power must still be purchased independently. See notes if not clear. 
Choose any number of advanced force powers up to the limit you are allowed. Animal Bonding. Minus 10 points. Advanced Force Empaths extend their detection range and know the best words to appeal to someone directly. They can communicate with others in a language they do not understand. Adept Light Side users can also bond with animals. Force Body. Minus 10 points. Using the Force to enhance one's body to its extremes, Force Body pushes past the limit, sacrificing long term health for a massive short term boost in endurance. Allegedly, this can prevent a user from becoming severed from the Force 2. Force Whirlwind, minus 10 points. An advanced telekinetic technique, Force Whirlwind generates a whirlwind around an opponent, suspending and spinning them in the air. This disorients the enemy and leaves them completely vulnerable to attack. Force Repulse, minus 12 points. Another variation on Force Push, Force Repulse is a massive explosion of Force energy that finally hurls all surrounding matter away from the practitioner. The waves of force energy can disintegrate opponents if the user is powerful enough. Force Revitalize, minus 12 points. A potent light side ability, Force Revitalize's effects can be altered on the user's desire. It can do everything from refreshing the exhausted to immediately heal the wounded to awakening the unconscious. Battle Precognition, minus 14 points. Through use of the Force to see the future, those strong in the Force can use it in the midst of battle. Through this ability, users see blows coming before they strike, and the effects of moves before they happen. Force Stasis, minus 15 points. Force Stasis freezes or stuns an organic opponent without harming them directly. More potent users of the ability can unleash a wave that renders multiple opponents near catatonic at once. Shatterpoint, minus 16 points. Shatter points are fold lines in the force. With immense concentration, users can detect and manipulate them, wholly altering the course of events. This can appear as identifying critical points, items, or people. Force Cloak, minus 16 points. While force concealment makes others ignore the user, force cloak directly manipulates light to render the user invisible or camouflaged. It can do so across the spectrum, and also affects sound, making the user wholly undetectable. Force Light, minus 20 points. Requires Knight and Not Major Heterodoxy. Those strong in the Light Side can use the Light Side of the Force offensively against Dark Siders as blasts of Light Side energy. In addition to doing damage, this will weaken their foe's connection to the Force. They can also purge Dark Side manifestations. Force Lightning, minus 20 points. Requires Master. Though mainly known as a dark side power, Jedi of strong will and character are capable of wielding force lightning. However, due to its association with the Sith, its use is forbidden by the Jedi Council, as its use is felt to be corrupting. However, it is undeniably powerful. Battle Meditation. Minus 20 points. Requires Night. Battle Meditation can be used to raise morale and fighting abilities of individuals. On a grander scale, it can improve coordination and cooperation, or to demoralize enemies. Consequently, it is a massive force multiplier if applied correctly. Yet if it breaks, whole formations may flee. Force Immunity. Minus 25 points. Requires Master and Jedi Sentinel. The most extreme example of mental barriers, Force Immunity is a skill that only the very best Jedi Sentinels can perform. Becoming almost one with the Force, the Sentinel becomes immune to mental attacks, disorientation, sensory deprivation, and attempts to paralyze. Advanced to Diminis, minus 25 points, requires Master and Jedi Guardian. The epitome of control over the body and use of the Force for defense, Force Absorption, or to Diminis, is a redirection or absorption of energy. While taught to all Jedi, true masters in the technique, can block lightsabers with their bare hands and shake off Force Lightning for a short time. Sever Force. Minus 25 points. Requires Master and Jedi Consular and not Major Heterodoxy. Sever Force is the power to cut a being's connection with the Force in a non-lethal fashion. This may be done temporarily or attempted permanently. 
Theoretically, one could use it defensively to cut off a torrent of powerful sentiments in the Force. Your lightsaber. This weapon is your life. Icon of the Jedi Knights, the lightsaber has served as a weapon for good and justice across the galaxy for hundreds of years. Elegant, but dangerous. It can only be used and constructed effectively by a Force sensitive. Each lightsaber is an intimately created weapon, for the Force guides the hand of its creator to complete it. You strongly remember when you constructed your first lightsaber. When you were a youngling, hoping for a senior Jedi to take you as their Padawan, you learned what it meant to be a Jedi. In those lessons, you were also taught about the lightsaber, the most precious tool and symbol of a Jedi Knight. One day, you found a crystal that resonated with you on a deep, primitive level. Taking it, you built a lightsaber around it, forging a bond with your weapon. That lightsaber may not necessarily be the one you carry now, but the crystal within is tightly attuned to you nonetheless. Choose one lightsaber color. Blue. Free. The most common and most recognisable of lightsaber colours, blue is an iconic colour of Jedi blades, the appearance of which can rally weak hearts. They are however mildly associated with those of a more physical bent, seeking to fight the darkness directly. Green. Free. Second most popular after blue bladed lightsabers, green coloured lightsabers are still very common. Traditionally, green blades have been associated with those strong in the force, or those a more intellectual, theoretical mindset. Yellow. Minus two points. Common enough to be known about, yet uncommon enough to be a curiosity. Yellow lightsaber blades have conflicted provenance. Some believe they are suited for those who balance the physical and the mental. Others, that they are just the result of purifying red crystals. White. Minus five points. A rare colour. White blades are believed to be rare naturally and are more often the result of purifying a red crystal. With no major connotation, some users of white or grey lightsabers prefer to distance themselves from either the Jedi Order or the Sith, potentially becoming grey Jedi. Purple. Minus 8 points. One of the rarer colours of lightsaber, purple blades are associated with powerful wielders. These wielders often feel that they are in conflict within themselves, on the edge between light and dark. Instead of giving in, they seek to control their inner darkness. Unconventional. Minus 10 points. While a select few colours make up the majority of lightsaber blades, there are other possible colours in addition to hybrid coloured blades. Red blades are the symbol of the Sith and uses frowned upon. Some distinguish gold blades, stating that they are the representative of being strong with the light. Lightsaber design. While the majority of lightsaber wielders use the standard design, a garless cylinder, other designs have evolved throughout the eons. The Jedi Order does not stringently control the construction of lightsabers as they are an intensely personal item, though teaching and sparring tended towards the more conventional forms. Regardless, the lightsaber you made was your own. Choose one lightsaber design. Standard. Free. A ubiquitous design. The standard lightsaber design has been unchanged for millennia, short of cosmetic alterations with customization. All of the standard lightsaber forms revolve around the standard design, making it easiest to learn. Curved. Free. A design intended for the duel. The curved hilt lightsaber seeks to improve precision, one-handed slashing and lunging capability. This comes at the expense of two-handed utility and a steep learning curve. Use of Makashi is advised. Shoto. Free. In essence a shortened standard lightsaber, both hilt and blade, the Shoto is often paired with another or standard lightsaber. The shorter length makes dual wielding more practical, though reduces reach. It is also used by more diminutive force sensitives. Double bladed. Minus two points. Double bladed lightsabers or saber staves are used like staves instead of swords and are fast and flexible. However, one blade may still be turned off, or the weapon split in half if swords are desired. Requires one extra lightsaber from equipment. Pike. Minus two points. Assuming the flexibility of the same stuff or superlative ability at range, the lightsaber pike is a polearm with a short blade. 
It is excellent in defense and attack due to its length, but very inconvenient to carry. Double-bladed versions exist too. Other, minus five points. Other lightsaber designs exist and have been experimented on to varying degrees of success. These are hard to fight against, but also to construct, repair, and learn how to fight with. The Light Whip is the most iconic alternate lightsaber form. Study your specialist lightsaber combat is advised. Lightsaber Mods As the centuries pass, certain Jedi made small modifications to their lightsaber construction to serve their needs. Less extreme than different hill designs, these modifications have situational utility and usually not employed by most lightsaber wielders. Choose any number of lightsaber mods. Concealed. Minus three points. Lightsabers may be intentionally constructed to be easily concealed, such as through disguising it as a cane or making it easy to take apart and reassemble. Dual phase. Minus four points. Most lightsabers include a blade adjust, but dual phase hilts include a mode to rapidly change between two preset blade lengths in the midst of combat. Dueling lens. Minus two points. Different focusing lenses can offer thinner, more agile blades that do not affect their damage output, making them ideal for dueling opponents, but not ranged foes. Trapped grip. Minus four points. Deception is beneath a Jedi but the Order does not forbid trapping a lightsaber to forbid its use against its maker, whether through an energy discharger or simply making it inert. Waterproof. Minus four points. Bifurcating cylindrical ignition is an alternate mode of energy pulse. By accommodating its use in the hill design, the lightsaber may be used underwater instead of shorting. Lightsaber forms. Before you constructed your first lightsaber, you learn the basics of lightsaber combat. Afterwards, your skill of it increased significantly as you underwent strenuous training using training blades, but increasingly, life blades. The Jedi Order recognizes seven forms of lightsaber combat, some with subforms. Each seeks different goals and has different requirements of the practitioner, both in terms of mindset and in body. But they are not merely martial arts, but also philosophies in their own right. Each style is associated with certain sentiments or goals, which is illustrated in how the practitioner moves or fights. Adept warriors in the Jedi Order encourage the study of multiple forms to increase versatility and understanding of an enemy's potential attacks. Some instead choose only one, either due to not being fond of combat, lacking time, or seeking true mastery in only one form. Either way, both hybrid combatants and masters of purely one form can be utterly fearful to face. It is assumed you have a passing familiarity in Formers 1 through 6, from basic training, experience, or viewing others fight. Taking a form indicates beyond basic study and potential incorporation into your primary fighting style. You may achieve mastery in only one form by buying the form twice. Choose at least one lightsaber form. Form 1, Shi Cho. Minus 6 points. The Way of the Sarlacc. The Determination Form The first form of lightsaber combat to be developed. Form 1 is taught to almost all Jedi. A simple form revolving around sweeping cuts, it is mainly used for fighting multiple opponents. It suffers against seasoned duelists using forms better suited to one-on-one -on -one combat. Form 2, Makashi Minus 10 points The way of the Yisimiri, the Contention Form The Duelist Form Form 2 is precise and fluid, relying upon skill and accuracy to be victorious. Being focused towards dueling, however, makes Form 2 less suited for multiple opponents, especially those using ranged weapons. It is often used with curved hilted lightsabers. Form 3, Sorosu. Minus 8 points. The way of the mind knock, the resilience form. A defensive form at his heart. Form 3 emphasizes an impervious defense against both lightsabers and blaster fire. Through short, efficient motions against attacks sensed through the Force, endurance is maintained. Form 3, however, has little capability in terms of offensive work. Form 4, Ataru. Minus 8 points. The way of the Hawk Bat, the aggression form. A highly aggressive lightsaber form. 
Form 4 utilizes the Wilder's physicality to its utmost, channeling the force through their bodies. The practitioner combines this with their own strength and speed to confuse and overwhelm their opponent in a flurry of acrobatic attacks. Form 5, Sheehan. Minus 10 points. The way of the Crate Dragon, the Perseverance Form. Attempting a compromise between Forms 3 and 2, Classic Form 5 was developed, a highly physical martial art. Sheehan exchanges some of Form 3's indomitable defense for greater aggression in the form of counterattacks. It is particularly effective against multiple ranged opponents. Form 5, Gem So, minus 10 points. The Way of the Crate Dragon, the Perseverance Form. The second type of Form 5, Gem So also seeks to establish a compromise between attack and defense and is even more physically demanding. Oriented towards lightsaber dueling, Gem So relies on the practitioner's strength to dominate the fight and thus their opponent. Form 6, Niman, minus 7 points, the way of the Rancor, the Moderation Form. A hybrid form balanced in offense and defense, Niman lacks any major strengths or weaknesses. Favored by Jedi less inclined towards combat, Niman encourages users to fill gaps in their repertoire with force attacks. Form 7, Juyo, minus 12 points, the way of the Vonskir, the Ferocity Form. The most vicious form. Form 7 is considered the most difficult form. Duo employs almost random bursts of action, focusing on assault. While the user attempts to control their focus, their efforts manifest as violent, energetic, and unpredictable attacks. Form 7. The Pad. Minus 14 points. The way of the Vonskir, the Ferocity form. Only recently developed by Master Windu, the Pad is as dangerous as Duo teetering on the edge of light and dark, combining the user's emotions with that of their foes. Also requiring a constant input of force energy, Verpard appears as rapid, unconnected attacks. Advanced Combat Techniques Though lightsaber combat largely revolves around the seven forms, there are additional techniques and principles. These are not as widely emphasized by the Order, typically because the techniques require too much time and are largely niche applications. Still, they are fields that merit a degree of study, and for some individuals, mastery. Choose any number of techniques. Jarkai, minus 12 points. The art of dual wielding. Jarkai is the study and use of two weapons. It is not an exclusive form itself. Jarkai can be used with other lightsaber forms, but it is a specialist area of study. It is highly potent, testing the user's control and offering a faster pace of combat. This will not provide you with a second lightsaber. Sokan, minus 6 points. A principle and philosophy of combat, rather than a form. Sokan refers to entering a mindset to utilize the environment to the maximum in combat. This usually takes the form of gaining advantage by seizing the high ground, or funneling foes through choke points. This can be achieved with or without the force, and with or without a weapon. Trakata, minus 15 points. The rare and infrequently observed art of turning a lightsaber's blade on and off to gain an advantage in combat, Trakata is considered a deceptive technique, and a highly risky one. Rarely taught because of the danger an inexperienced user places themselves in, Trakata can be both highly unexpected and highly effective in the hands of a master in the art. Sword and Gun, minus 10 points. It is rare for a Jedi to use a blaster. It is even rare to see a Jedi use a blaster and a lightsaber simultaneously. Yet, from a theoretical standpoint, it has great merits. The lightsaber provides defense, the blaster reach. To compensate for the reduced accuracy and flexibility one handling both the blaster and the lightsaber, the Jedi uses the Force to provide additional control. Advanced Telekinetic Combat Minus 25 points Requires basic force power, telekinesis. In the hands of a potent user, telekinesis may be applied to the direction of weapons in combat. This usually takes the form of saber throws. More experienced users can manipulate multiple weapons at once, fighting with them independently and forming a sphere of defense, hovering lightsabers around themselves. Mounted combat, minus 10 points. Covering the use of lightsabers on animal back and on speeder bikes, mounted combat involves the use of weapons in hit and run attacks on dismounted foes and fighting against mounted opponents. 
This also covers fighting on moving objects like trains or speeders. The skill shares much with aerial lightsaber combat, fighting against airborne targets on the ground, and fighting ground targets while airborne. Specialist lightsaber combat, minus 15 points. As the use of double bladed lightsabers, lightsaber pikes, light whips, and other unusual lightsabers is rare, so too is material in using them. To properly utilize the advantage given in unpredictability, speed, and limp, users of the niche weapons must train further to avoid injury and maximize fighting potential. Unorthodox, minus 15 points. Unorthodox methods in lightsaber combat ignore or vary from the established, codified forms. Though it is extremely rare for a practitioner to develop a wholly new form in the modern day, addition of unorthodox techniques can confuse an unsuspecting opponent. However, care must be taken lest it backfire against more efficient moves. Form Purism, minus 15 points. Some hold that to delve in multiple forms is meddling, incapable of reaching the heights of a true master of one form. True or not, you have tied yourself to this philosophy in search of a true mastery of a single, pure form. Take only one lightsaber form, and at mastery level. Cannot take advanced combat technique sword, and gun, or unorthodox. Skills As you developed as a Jedi, you are not only trained to utilize the Force. By merit of their responsibilities, Jedi studied other subjects too. Part of these skills you gained from teaching, others you took up as a hobby in your free time, because you enjoyed it or because you found it relaxing. You were not found wanting in the Force enough to be discarded and sent to the Service Corps, promising enough that a senior knight took you as their Padawan. Through your master's teachings and intensified education, you began to understand more, not just about the Force, but the galaxy. The Jedi's command of the Force made them perfect peacekeepers, guardians of the law and of peace. Yet too, they found that their command of the Force made them adept in other fields. There were plenty of researchers, naturally. Yet so too were their ambassadors and those who were responsible for ensuring that the Order could cooperate and coordinate with bureaucracy and politicians. The need to enforce the law and secure the Republic called for Jedi who specialize in covert methods as investigators, monitors, and what some might less charitably call spies. For some, understanding of the Force was but secondary to this role, the custodianship of the Republic that the Jedi took upon themselves. The Jedi Order were not ivory tower intellectuals as its detractors thought. Consumed as it was by discussions on the Force and by institutional rigidity, its members still sought to help the galaxy in what way they could. The code may discourage killing, but it, and the Order, was not above violence, nor more underhanded tactics. In the Jedi Order, a plethora of skills could be found in its members, from the esoteric to the utterly practical. A lack of a skill does not denote a complete lack of knowledge in that field. Instead, taking a skill denotes a level of competency that is above average for the Jedi. E.g., those without slicing can still slice, but by not to the same level. This will already be a higher level than the ordinary citizen through teaching, training. Use of the Force elevates it even further. This section denotes the base aptitude in that skill, and will still apply in the presence of Force dampeners, etc. Level 1 costs 10 points, and denotes greater than above average ability. Level 2 costs 14 points, requires level 1, and denotes exceptional ability. Free skills obtained from other choices may only be used to purchase level 1 of a skill. Choose any number of skills. Martial skills. Unarmed combat. The all Jedi learn some degree of unarmed combat, the majority of combat training for Jedi is based upon the use of the lightsaber, or the force. Level 1. You are trained in Akani Martial Arts, a highly efficient form of unarmed combat that is commonly taught among special forces. Level 2. Among the best in the galaxy, your skill has reached the point where you can punch clean through metal without damage to yourself, with minor assistance from the Force. Melee Weapons The lightsaber is the weapon of a Jedi Knight, but is not the only weapon often seen throughout the galaxy. There are all manner of them out there. Level 1. You have an above average aptitude in all commonly used melee weapons, mainly viroblades and pole arms. Level 2. You are so skilled in melee combat that you can fight decently well with any weapon, no matter how foreign, without additional training or having used it before. 
ranged weapons. Blasters may be crude and uncivilized to some, but they are also the main weapons of the overwhelming majority of the galaxy. This skill covers non-heavy weapons. Level 1. You know to use ranged weapons at a basic level compared to most clone troopers without use of the Force. Level 2. Without the Force, your skill is comparable to that of a veteran arc trooper. You are capable of performing extremely difficult shots at range against moving targets. Demolitions. Explosives are ubiquitous throughout the galaxy, from thermal detonators to concussion grenades to rocket launchers. However, they are indiscriminate. Level 1. You know how to operate basic explosives and heavy weapons with relatively good effectiveness without the force. Level 2. You know how to defuse bombs and operate exotic heavy weapons. Also, you know how to make explosives from raw ingredients and identify them from trace residue. Piloting Terran Jedi are expected to be able to travel great distances on their missions. They may encounter a variety of land-based transport methods, armed, armoured or not. Level 1 Your skills are comparable to a professional scout trooper. You also know how to ride terrestrial animals like Varactyls. Level 2 You are capable of performing evasive actions with any vehicle you pilot. These versions are physically impossible without use of the Force. Animals respond without prodding. Piloting, space. Force users command of the Force make them natural pilots. However, good training goes a long way, especially considering the wide breadth of ships present in the galaxy. Level 1. You are considered an ace pilot, capable in all situations. You eat every last drop of performance out of anything you fly. Level 2. Your skill of piloting means that you can reliably land crippled craft or fly any exotic ship you've never encountered before. You're even better in space combat. Awareness. Unrelated to Force Sense, awareness covers general situational awareness, detecting traps and ambushes, and skills relating to performing reconnaissance. Level 1. You have comparable awareness to that of special forces before the Force, and you rarely drift off when doing extended work. Level 2. It's very hard to take you surprise, as your awareness verges on paranoia. You spot potential weak points that are hidden more easily. Your force sense is also more sensitive. Athletics The Jedi lifestyle encourages the development of athletic individuals through sparring and a culture of moderation. Some are more active in honing their bodies. Level 1 You are in peak condition for your species. You have an ideal body honed for battle even before use of the Force. Level 2. For intense effort and meditation, you have used the Force to push your body's limits just beyond what is physically possible, permanently. Tactics. Tactics is the coordination and employment of forces in a limited sphere. The Jedi are not meant to be soldiers. Strong command of tactics comes in useful. Level 1. Your skills in tactical command are similar to those of a senior clone commander, and you easily adapt. Level 2 Your presence on the battlefield allows you to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, simply by moving other pieces on the board, without personally intervening. Strategy Strategy on the system or galactic scale is a large and complicated beast involving massive numbers and distances. It is an art not easily learned, but failures in it can be catastrophic. Level 1 you have a good understanding of strategy. You can command and coordinate operations across sectors. Level 2. You are one of the best strategists of your time, rarely failing to achieve results or ever be totally defeated. You always have something up your sleeve. Intellectual Skills Diplomacy The art of conducting negotiations, diplomacy is as much about etiquette as it is about the ability to open dialogue and detect when the other party is being deceptive. Level 1. Most people will trust you enough to negotiate in good faith, and you are adept at noticing discrepancies in behaviour. Level 2. You are an exceptional negotiator, able to get deals out of the most trulucent. You are highly capable of reading people, and can reliably detect falsehood without the force. Persuasion. The art of convincing another to take a certain point of view, use of the force to manipulate others is at times unreliable, then, Jedi must use their own wit. Level 1. You are a persuasive and eloquent individual. 
rarely resorting to fallacies to get your point across. Level 2. You can persuade those whose thoughts are set in stone, or at least make them consider. Those you have convinced will retain these views for much longer, and are harder to persuade. Leadership. Diplomacy may get someone to fight, and persuasion convince them, but leadership is necessary to make and keep them. Jedi are expected to inspire those around them. Level 1. You are a competent leader. Your subordinates respect you and follow your orders without major objections. Level 2. You readily inspire loyalty and effort among your followers for your actions. Few would readily betray you of their own will, and many would die for you. Training. The Order not only educates its members and requires senior members to take Padawans, but knights in the field may need to train others in all sorts of concepts. Level 1. You are a solid trainer, typically able to impart knowledge onto a learner without causing confusion or misinterpretation. Level 2. A highly skilled teacher. You know how to break down concepts to teach others even faster. Trainees will be more respectful and less resistant. Medicine. Though armed with force healing, some Jedi choose to learn mundane medicine, so that they might conserve their strength for the most dire situations. Level 1. You not only know first aid, but also high level skills, similar to that of a combat medic or paramedic. Level 2. Your knowledge in medicine is comparable to that of a surgeon or an advanced medical droid. You can perform advanced forms of surgery upon most species. Knowledge. Jedi are also scholars, studying topics as diverse as the nature of the Force to archaeology to the hard sciences. This skill covers only one field of study, e.g. biology. Level 1. You are well studied and have a respectable degree of higher understanding in the field, comparable to a postdoctoral level. Level 2. You are considered an authority on the subject within the Order, perhaps a Republic. Your level of knowledge is comparable to professors and leaders in the field. Research. As scholars, Jedi must be capable of performing research, discovering new information or understanding about a particular subject. Level 1. You have a good understanding of the scientific method and carry yourself with good academic rigour in your research. Level 2. You are a highly capable researcher, capable of making the leaps in logic to forge new, strong hypotheses and develop new concepts and techniques. Analysis. Aptitude in drawing conclusions and discoveries from available data analyses is often performed by droids due to their computer brains. Level 1. You can quickly absorb and analyse information to the degree of a professional and find what is needed. Level 2. You have that personal touch so that you can find data and reach comprehensive conclusions faster than droids can. Your hunches often turn out to be correct too. Astrogation. Astrogation is the science of interstellar navigation in real and hyperspace. Most rely on droids, but the best have an intimate knowledge of it. Level 1. Your skill in astrogation allows you to readily notice and escape from ambushes in real or hyperspace, regardless of craft. Level 2. You understand astrogation almost as well as a droid, capable of determining possible jump routes that are mostly unknown to others by theory alone. Calculations are faster. Art. A wide array of art forms exist in the galaxy, from visual to music, to literature, and all types of performing art. This only covers one form, e.g. dancing. Level 1. You are skilled in your chosen art, above hobbyist level, and at professional level, should you choose to do so. Level 2. You are an exceptional talent at that type of art, enough to draw plaudits from almost all who view it. If a type of performing art, some of the audience may end up being captivated. Covert Skills Stealth How not to be seen, stealth covers not only the ability to avoid detection, but also the ability to avoid being noticed when the user is in disguise and infiltration. Level 1 You know how to move yourself quietly without the force, and convincingly act while undercover for longer periods. Level 2 you are capable of forging to a good degree, making infiltration and impersonation easier. You are even harder to detect when hidden, 
and maintain your cover better. Subterfuge Subterfuge covers concepts such as intimidation, deception, and underhandedness in behaviour. Jedi are not supposed to act this way, but sometimes they do. Level 1 You are a cunning individual, capable of using ambiguous phrases and figures of speech for misdirection. Level 2 You can adapt your posture readily enough to deceive people, and do so instinctively. You can also use it to effectively threaten when necessary. You are a highly proficient liar. Espionage Espionage is the art and process of gathering important information by covert means. This covers working with spies and performing spying techniques personally. Level 1 You are competent at the fundamentals of espionage, personally and in leading an organisation. Level 2 You are skilled at handling a large number of agents, and are relatively good at determining when one of them has been compromised or deceived. Slicing Slicing is the art of breaking into and compromising computer systems to extract information or take control, electronically and physically. Level 1 You are an above average slicer, capable of penetrating commercial security systems and some military ones. Level 2 You are a skilled enough slicer to be potentially capable of compromising the Republic's most secure data banks, however, you will still need to gain access physically. Security Security encompasses guarding and escorting locations, items or persons, in both an overt and covert manner. It covers the personal and martial aspects of the job. Level 1 You know how to act so your presence alone deters most attackers, or delays them enough to secure your target. Level 2 You are a meticulous planner, capable of escorting a high priority target out through a multitude of ever-changing exfiltration routes, loud or quiet. Mechanics Mechanics involves the maintaining, repair, and construction and interaction with all kinds of mechanical objects, from lightsabers to blasters, droids to starfighters. Level 1 Above averaging mechanics, you can repair most items and perform rudimentary modifications upon them. Level 2 You are capable of working with the most exotic or difficult objects. Additionally, you know where to easily and cheaply source and obtain spare parts and mods for them. Smuggling the art of transporting persons and items with the intent that they not be discovered. Smuggling is as illegal as it is ubiquitous. This covers both interstellar and terrestrial methods. Level 1 You are a relatively competent smuggler, capable of moving cargoes and persons in all manner of vehicles. Level 2 You have friends among the smuggling community, who are occasionally willing to give you tips on the transport of important cargoes. You are very good at smuggling too. Survival the ability to survive away from civilization and without supplies for both the individual and for others. This covers finding sources of food and water and shelter construction. Level 1 You have survival skills comparable to an elite soldier and can survive on extended periods by yourself. Level 2 Your survival skills have increased to the point where, with minimal support, you can assist in the survival of multiple people for your own efforts with limited support. Tracking Without use of the Force, tracking is the skill of being able to follow someone or something based on traces of its passing. This does not cover doing it stealthily. Level 1 You know the fundamentals of modern tracking and use of specialised tools like homing beacons and search scans. Level 2 You know how to track without using advanced tools, relying only upon traces like footprints. Your aptitude with tools is also greatly increased. Investigation the collection and examination of practical evidence in order to reach the truth. Jedi are investigators to solve crimes or crises across the galaxy. Level 1 You are a good investigator. Around the level of a seasoned detective, you know how to examine practical evidence well. Level 2 A highly seasoned investigator. You notice elements which others might disregard, and often realise the number of routes available and how best to pursue them. Equipment The Jedi Code forbades members from possessing many belongings, as it was felt it was a distraction from the Force. As tensions in the galaxy increased, enforcement of this rule became less strenuous. Jedi started to collect more belongings. Sometimes it was as simple as them being unable to return them to the temple, 
Other times, they sought specialist items to assist them in performing their missions. Select Jedi were given items on long-term loan from the Order. Long-term enough that they were in their possessions in all but name. These may be used by yourself or loaned to an associate. Choose any number of equipment items. Custom attire, minus two points. Though the Order has traditions regarding standard attire and the public expectations, not all Jedi adhere to these standards as much as others. Given enough justification, time and credits, you might get away with not wearing those brown robes. Cultural clothing is the most usual justification, or for those undercover. For others, it is also an opportunity to have their attire done in tougher materials. Light armor. Minus four points. Though the Jedi are not soldiers, certain Jedi who are likely to see combat do make the decision to add armor to supplement their robes and force powers, for the passive protection it brings. While some do so for aesthetic reasons or to fit in among their soldierly compatriots, it will provide some protection, mainly against shrapnel, especially if it is used to protect more vital parts of the body. Heavy armor. Minus seven points. While some Jedi find armor restrictive, there are a select few who have gone in the other direction and acquired or commissioned full sets of fitted armor, with or without robes. It will take time to adapt to the armor, but its passive protection is unparalleled. Though many fully armored Jedi still refuse to wear helmets, it may be worth breaking the trend if it is not too hindering. Slicing Kit. Minus seven points. Though the Order distributes specialist equipment as needed for certain missions, Sometimes you don't get what you necessarily might need. This is a top-of-the-line slicing kit, confiscated from the Notorious Slicer. It will get you into most systems, perhaps all systems, given enough time and information. Conveniently, its components are disguised as mundane items. Tool Kit. Minus 7 points. While every Jedi has equipment to maintain their gear, lightsaber especially, you may find it prudent to have a broader or specialised set of tools beyond the very basics. Though bulky enough to have been carried on a fighter, or left at camp or the temple, these would be suitable for working on droids, spacecraft, and any general mechanical object. Blaster Pistol. Minus two points. Ubiquitous throughout the galaxy, pistols range from easily conceivable holdout pistols to veritable hand cannons modded to their limit found in the hands of bounty hunters. Most are extremely reliable and ammunition is readily available. Though frowned upon and considered uncivilized by some Jedi, a blaster weapon would be a useful weapon, potentially literally, up your sleeve. Blaster, minus five points. Full size rifle or carbine length, the presence of a blaster rifle is more likely to cause others to believe you a mercenary at first sight rather than a Jedi, so rare or odd it is to see a Jedi with one. Jedi cultural mores do generally frown against use of them. That being said, they have their uses, being capable of reaching ranges that would require particularly adept force mastery to reach. Vibra Knife. Minus two points. Most opponents of Jedi are concerned with the lightsaber they carry, perhaps enough to ignore anything else the Jedi might have on their person. A sound Vibra Knife is a generally useful tool for survival as much as for combat, and generally innocuous. Hidden in your boot, it is a useful accessory to expedite escape. Electro Binoculars. Minus four points. Usually seen in the hands of officers, electro binoculars are a step above the widely seen civilian micro binoculars or the compact macro binoculars issued to Jedi. While capable of variable magnification, the more expensive electro binoculars include an integral rangefinder and capacity to view in infrared night vision or far IR thermal. Sentimental item. Minus one point. Jedi are meant to have no attachments, yet many keep light, sentimental items of some sort. Whether a former master's lightsaber crystal, a pendant, or some other trinket, the item's presence minutely improves the user's strength in the Force when it is around due to the Force coming off the item. Mod Cybernetic, minus 10 points, requires amputee. Individual skill with tools do, on occasion, modify prosthesis in an attempt to improve them compared to what was there prior. You have modified your cybernetics to have the same range of movement as a natural appendage, advanced sense of touch, and reinforced materials of construction. It may be covered in simskin if you desire. Personal Energy Shield. Minus 10 points. Though less widespread due to development being outpaced by blast attack, 
Personal energy shields provide a short amount of protection against blaster fire. Commonly issued to senior officers, this type takes the form of a belt-mounted battery-powered unit. They are available to Jedi who want that little bit of extra protection from blasters or shrapnel. Extra lightsaber. Minus 10 points. While it is difficult to find multiple lightsaber crystals that resonate as well as a force sensitive first, they are not unknown. With multiple lightsaber crystals, multiple lightsabers are a possibility. Can't say multiple. One extra lightsaber required for double bladed weapons. Return to your lightsaber to build it, ignoring combat. Hyperspace map. Minus 15 points. Through donations, careful keeping, and occasional subterfuge, the Jedi Archives contain records of some largely unknown hyperlanes. You have been granted access to some of these records, allowing you to reach certain destinations faster or with less notice. Take one additional mission. It may only be taken once. Holocron. Minus 15 points. You have acquired a Jedi Holocron, a device containing the teachings of an old Jedi Master. Through long-term borrowing from the Archives or on one of your missions, this will doubtlessly increase your understanding of the Force. Learn one additional Advanced Force power. You must still pay the points cost for it. You may purchase a maximum of three Holocrons. Reinforcement Upgrades Can be purchased for any of the above items, but Slicing Kit, Tool Kit, Sentimental Item, Hyperspace app, and Holocron. Cannot purchase both upgrades for one item. Each upgrade must be bought individually. Cortosis Reinforcement Minus 5 points per upgrade. A rare metal with the property of shorting out lightsabers. Items can be Cortosis plated or clothes contain Cortosis weave. However, Cortosis cannot stop lightsabers indefinitely, and is best treated as a convenience and not relied upon. Beskar reinforcement. Minus 8 points per upgrade. The famed Mandalorian iron. Beskar is prized for its toughness and its manufacture, a tightly held secret among Mandalorian smiths. It can stop lightsabers for longer than a cortosis, though not indefinitely, and provides better resistance against other attacks. Custom Spacecraft, minus 15 points. The Jedi Order gives their members practical free reign over their personal starfighters, realising that the increase in performance is worth the inconvenience. Other Jedi have permanent loan of one of the corvettes the Jedi have access to. You are one such Jedi who has invested a large quantity of time into modifying your craft. Go to the custom spacecraft section to customize your craft. Optional modifiers, choose any one or none. Customize parts, minus five points. Gain one additional ship mod slot. Logistically disfavored, minus five points. Lose one ship mod slot, minus two points off every purchase ship mod. Corners cut, plus five points. Lose one ship mod slot. Custom spacecraft can be purchased twice if one is a starfighter. Personal unit, minus 15 points. As the Clone Wars intensified, Jedi served as commanders and leaders of all kinds, from officers in the field to commanding networks of spy rings. Of the senior abilities, the Council has recommended that you be given free reign to command your own unit. Your influence will mould it into what you desire. Go to the personal unit section to customise your unit. Optional modifiers, choose any one or none. Abundant supplies, minus five points. Gain one additional unit modifier slot. Experienced scroungers, minus five points. Lose one unit modifier slot. Two points off every purchase unit modifier. Supply strangled, plus five points. Lose one unit modifier slot. Opinions. Jedi were not infallible. Taught as they were to control their emotions, rivalries still flare between Padawans and lessons, between knights differing in opinions about the Republic. The galaxy as a whole was no different. Though many still trusted the Jedi as a symbol of peace, reason and civilization, plenty did not, especially as tensions mounted, and the Jedi and the Republic only appeared to be running from crisis to crisis without actually solving the root problems. They had enemies, and made new ones as readily as they made, and kept friends and allies. As you travel the galaxy, performing missions for the Order, you have journeyed from the Deep Core to the Outer Rim. Though currently the Republic and the CIS dominate known space, there are a variety of factions, including those within those superpowers of note. Your run-ins with them have determined their attitude towards you, and how they will treat you, and where you are particularly welcome. Some see you as lifelong friends, 
others as committed enemies. They will not stop to remove. Choose up to a maximum of three factions as enemies, not including those gained due to your Jedi rank. Determine the opinions of these groups towards you. Galactic Senate. Deadlocked as it is by corruption and infighting, the Galactic Senate of the Republic is still a force to be reckoned with for the resources members have at their disposal. Ally. Minus 10 points. Your exploits have gained approval in the Senate. It's been an increase in pro-Jedi sentiment and have access to some Senators' networks. Neutral. Free. The Senate regards you much like any other Jedi. Opinion is split with most being bemused and acknowledging you as a vital part of the war effort. Enemy. Plus 10 points. Factions in the Senate have developed an antipathy towards you. Anti-Jedi sentiment will increase and your public opinion will suffer. Cannot take Senator Mina Prelate as an associate. Republic Command. The non-clones at the top of High Command carry a great deal of influence. Who gets reinforcements, where supplies are routed, who is assigned to which sector. Ally. Minus 10 points. Your actions are drawing the respect of High Command and non-clone forces. The non-clone Republic military will be more helpful. Neutral. Free. The Republic military sees you as another Jedi to work with, relying on what results to achieve to ascertain how well they can rely upon you. Enemy. Plus 10 points. Justified or not, your actions have not been looked on favourably by High Command. Expect the Republic military to be much less cooperative. Cannot take Rear Admiral Xenosia as an associate. The Clone Army. In a largely homogeneous force, rumours spread fast among the clones, so many of which are overlooked by their Jedi and non-clone commanders. Ally. Minus 15 points. You have won widespread admiration and respect from clones across the GAR. They would readily die for you, and ready to help whenever needed. Neutral. Free. The clones have not made their mind up about you as a Jedi officer. They do not shun you, but do not welcome you as much as their favourites. Enemy. Plus 10 points. Your actions have you disrespected amongst the clones. Their disdain makes for uncomfortable fighting with them at your back. Cannot take Clone Lieutenant Furness as an associate. The Separatists. The Confederacy of Independent Systems is the enemy, but there are elements in the CIS open to dialogue or even working together against a greater enemy. Ally. Minus 15 points. You are considered someone to work with among less extreme elements of the CIS. They are open to the ceasefires, negotiation, and perhaps can be turned. Neutral. Free. The CIS regards you as their enemy, same as any other Jedi they would face. They will fight you no less fiercely, nor afford you any additional benefits. Enemy. Plus 15 points. Having drawn the attention of a major CIS leader, droid attacks upon you are even stronger. Bounty hunters may be dispatched on occasion. Cannot take Thalia Send as an associate. Neutral systems. Satine Crisis attempt to represent those systems trying to keep out of the war. The Council of Neutral Systems consists of at least 1,500 systems you could say out of the war. Ally, minus 7 points. Sympathetic persons in the CNS are willing to breach their prized neutrality should you be in peril, offering you shelter, help, and safe harbour. Neutral, free. The neutral systems see you as a regrettable consequence of the war, a Jedi driven from their true purpose as a response to current tensions. Enemy. Plus five points. The neutral systems see you as a bloody-handed and violent harbinger of the war, and will only tolerate your presence as much as courtesy requires them. Cannot take Nares Grafrey as an associate. Corporate Sector. A sector that is wholly a corporatocracy, the corporate sector is normally part of the Republic, but is actually practically independent and currently CIS aligned. Friendly, minus 8 points. And the corporate sector values its independence, though there is money to be made in war. Their afflicted corporations offer you a discount across the board. Neutral, free. Corpsec treats you with the decorum of a Republic delegate. That is to say, the necessary politeness and a concerted effort to politely encourage you to leave. Enemy. Plus 8 points. The CEOs and bosses of Corpsec hate you. Expect their contacts and fellow companies across the galaxy 
to be more hostile, and the occasional hit. Cannot take Ayatilona as an associate. The Mandalorians. The signs of Mandalore and the Jedi Order have a bitter, bloody history, marked by bloodshed and loss of both sides. But they are undeniably good warriors. Ally, minus 15 points. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mandalorians in the know will grudgingly help you at times. Neutral, free. The Mandalorians hate you as much as any other Jedi, through historical grievances and as a symbol of the Republic's influence. Enemy, plus 15 points. Mandalorians dislike you particularly with an enmity that crosses the divide in current Mandalorian society. Take further care in the Outer Rim. Cannot take Bran et Terra as an associate. The Hut Cartel. It is a polite fiction that Hut space is not independent. The Hut Cartel is the galaxy's most powerful crime syndicate, with a military and ruling over thousands of worlds. Friendly. Minus 15 points. The members of the cartel are only loyal to themselves, but they are willing to tolerate you for the time being, while you are useful and share goals. Neutral. Free. The hearts pointedly ignore Republic authority no matter what form it takes, and are all too willing to manipulate Republic agents against their political enemies. Enemy, plus 15 points. The Hutt cartel has agreed on one thing, that you are an irritating wretch. Where they bark, others follow. A trail of bounty hunters is after your head. Cannot take court as an associate. The Underworld. With untold amounts of credits moving through their hands, the crime laws of the criminal underworld exert influence from the outer rim to the core worlds. Friendly, minus 10 points. Their intended saint out of the war, major figures owe you a few favours in exchange for the conveniences you have done for them in the past. Neutral, free. The underground distrust you as a Jedi, a symbol of law and order and of the Republic. But where there's money, they'll talk or look the other way. Enemy, plus 12 points. Major figures among the cartels and syndicates of the galaxy have found you meddlesome. They will smear and hurt you as much as they can. Cannot take Ayatolona as an associate. The Sith. The Sith are the enemies of all Jedi. They are a highly competitive and brutal entity that seeks the Order's utter destruction and above all, the domination of the galaxy. Insignificant, free. The Sith despise all Jedi for being weak, and you are no different. However, they consider you to be beneath their plans, and no one to be mainly concerned about as they seek galactic domination. Enemy, plus 25 points. For whatever reason, the Sith Lord behind the scenes has it out for you. Count Dooku, various dark side adepts and their agents will come after you with a distressing frequency. They will show you no mercy once they get their hands upon you. Can only take a Padawan associate if they are also your current Padawan. Local Systems There are an untold number of systems in the galaxy, worlds which you may have been involved on. You have left your mark on all of them, but on some, much more. Ally, minus two points. One system is particularly fond of you in particular, feeling they owe you a debt of some kind. You will always get hospitality and help there. Enemy plus two points. Through your actions you are particularly hated on one world. You will receive hostile treatment and citizens may take a chance of taking your head. Local systems do not count against the opinion enemy limit. However, those with mandatory enemies may designate one local system enemy as a mandatory enemy to minimize enemies, but this is optional. You can designate five local systems which have strong opinions towards you. These can be enemies or allies. Custom Spacecraft Requires purchase of equipment, custom spacecraft, to access this section. With increasing hostilities, resulting in the outbreak of the Clone Wars, Jedi were given unparalleled access to the Temple Hangar, and to the fighters and ships the Order has access to. Jedi are given access to, and in all practically own, a light starship for their personal use. These are typically starfighters, which may be modified at the owner's desires, though the Order also has access to Corvettes, and is willing to offer their use to senior Jedi. Serving Jedi Generals would typically also assign larger vessels as their flagships. Having R4-M27 
as an associate, gains an additional ship mod slot. These granted ship mods must still be bought. Free ship mods from Space Frame do not count towards a frame ship mod limit. For Padawans, it is assumed that Corvette and Heavy ships are personally owned by their master, not them. Choose a ship class. Starfighter, free. With the Clone Wars, most Jedi have access to Starfighters to use as a personal transport or to lead Starfighter formations. These light, nimble craft are single-seater and without modification require the use of a hyperspace ring to enter hyperspace, limiting their operational ability away from a base or carrier. Number of ship mods depends on the Starfighter series. Corvette, minus 10 points. Rarely, Jedi may be granted the authority to operate larger vessels for independent missions. The Order has access to a collection of light corvettes, possessing longer range and greater capacity than single-seater fighters, as well as firepower and durability. Take up to 8 ship mods. Heavy. Minus 15 points. Larger, heavier vessels are not assigned to Jedi as personal vessels. Instead, these ships, almost all Republic property, are assigned to Jedi for a mission or for the duration of the war. Acting as flagships, the number of modifications that can be made upon them is limited. Covers everything larger than a Starfighter or Corvette. Number of ship mods depends on size. Ship Space Frame Select one stock space frame as the basis of your customised craft. Delta 7 Aether Sprite Series Free Require Starfighter Class Jedi Interceptor in service not long before the start of the Clone Wars, Coat Systems Engineering's Delta VII Aether Sprite series is a highly advanced interceptor craft intended for Jedi pilots. Due to its period in service, many Jedi Aces have customised their fighters extensively to suit their needs and will share their advice. Choose up to five ship mods. Eta II Actis series. Minus five points. Requires Starfighter. Class Jedi Interceptor. The newest class of Jedi Interceptor, the High Performance Eta 2 Actis series, is in most aspects superior to a stock Delta 7. However, due to being so new, the Jedi have not yet fully understood how to modify as much as other Starfighters. Take Ship Mod, Sublight Engines and Ship Mod Performance for free. Choose up to free Ship Mods. Z95 Headhunter series, minus 5 points, requires Starfighter, class Light Fighter. A rugged starfighter from the mines of Incom and Subpro, the Z-95 is currently in service with the Republic military. Lacking the sheer base performance of the Jedi Interceptors, the Z-95 has a wide array of aftermarket modifications available, so it may be tailored to a pilot's individual needs. She's up to six ship mods. Pathfinder Class Corvette. Free. Requires Corvette. Class Scout Corvette. Used by the Jedi Order for scouting and exploration missions, the Pathfinder class Scout Corvette is a sleek and fast product of the Corellian Engineering Corporation. Equipped with advanced electronics for scanning, it's a fragile space frame that nonetheless has CEC's hallmark engine banks and modifiability. Take ship mod electronics for free. Choose up to eight ship mods. Defender class Corvette. Free. Requires Corvette. Class Light Corvette. Old, aging, and in dire need of a rebuild, this Defender Class Light Corvette is not thousands of years old, but merely over a hundred, manufactured on request of a long past Jedi Master from an old design. But it is a stout, tough frame that served the Jedi well long ago, and it is time for it to serve again. Take Ship Mod Hull for free. Choose up to eight Ship Mods. Consular Class Cruiser Slash Frigate. Free. Requires Heavy. Class. Diplomatic Cruiser slash Assault Frigate Originally built as a diplomatic vessel and used extensively in this role before the Clone Wars by Republican Jedi Ambassadors, the Consular class was often upgraded with the Charger C-70 package, converting it into a surprisingly potent Assault Frigate. Pre-War Choose up to 8 ship mods or Charger C-70, take ship mod, laser cannons for free, and choose up to 7 ship mods. Pelter Class Frigate. Free. Requires Heavy. Class Frigate. A nimble, versatile craft, 
The Pelter class is typically used by the Republic Navy as a medical or cargo frigate on account of its modularity. However, it can be used as a command or escort vessel if necessary. Rarely used by the Jedi Order in favour of larger vessels, it is still a capable and reliable craft. Take ship mod, life support for free. Choose up to seven ship mods. Arquitan's class light cruiser. Minus four points. Requires heavy. Class, light cruiser. The Republic's main purpose, built escort. The Arquitan's class is a light cruiser that excels in both an escorting and command role. With a similar philosophy of focusing upon shields and speed over armour, like most early slash mid-war Republic ships, the also Arquitans boasts a mean punch for its size. Take ship mod, missile tubes, for free. Choose up to six ship mods. Dreadnought class heavy cruiser. Minus six points. Requires heavy. Class, heavy cruiser. Venerable and widespread, the Dreadnought class is built like an axe like a brick. While armoured, armed and very unsubtle, its intensive manpower requirements are often relieved by significant use of slave rigging and droid crews. As older vessels, they are usually manned by non-clone crews experienced in their use. Take ship mod, slave rigging for free. Choose up to five ship mods. Acclimator class assault ship. Minus eight points. Requires heavy. Class assault ship. Mass producing secrecy. The acclimator class of assault ships were pressed into a capital role by nascent Republic Navy. Often jury rigged to serve as frontline combatants or carriers, the class generally suffered as a space combatant, lacking the shields or armor of later Republic Star Destroyers. However, its service life means that modifying it will be easy. Choose up to four ship mods. Victory class Star Destroyer. Minus 12 points. Requires heavy. Class Star Destroyer. A competitor to the ubiquitous Venator class, the Victory class Star Destroyer was designed as a frontline combatant. Rush development and intrigue between RSD and KDY saw an underpowered design into service. Though the Victory 2 subclass ameliorated speed issues, the Victory class has gained a reputation of being a slow but formidable ship. Choose up the free ship mods. Venator class Star Destroyer. Minus 15 points. Requires heavy. Class Star Destroyer. The most common capital ship in the Republic Navy, the Venator class is a carrier with decent frontline capabilities. Its two bridges make it an ideal flagship and is often used in this capacity. Reliable and extremely flexible, the Venator's flaw is that it is pushed into every role due to a shortage of specialized vessels. Take ship mod expanded hangars for free. Choose up to free ship mods. Other. Due to the size of the galaxy and the scale of the Clone Wars, Jedi might find themselves in command of all sorts of vessels. Starfighter, minus five points. Maximum of five ship mods. Corvette, minus five points. Requires Corvette, maximum of nine ship mods. Frigate, minus five points. Requires heavy, maximum of eight ship mods. Cruiser, minus ten points. Requires heavy, maximum of six ship mods. Star Destroyer, minus 20 points, requires heavy, maximum of 4 ship mods. Ship Manufacturer The galactic shipbuilding industry is full of cross-pollination and subcontracting, only exasperated by the start of the Clone Wars. A handful of major shipwrights and starfighter manufacturers dominate the industry, all known for different qualities they express in their products. These will reflect in your ship for its construction and the parts acquired for modification. Choose one ship manufacturer. Kuat Drive Yards. Kuat Drive Yards and its subsidiaries dominate the shipbuilding business, having made its mark through providing high quality starships through peerless quality control, notably the Venator class Star Destroyer and Jedi Interceptors. This results in highly reliable craft. CEC. The oldest shipwrights in the galaxy. The Corellian Engineering Corporation is a massive, sprawling entity that only sells to the civilian market. However, as a major subcontractor of every other shipwright, its parts are known to result in vessels known for their speed. Cyana. Republic Cyana Systems is old, but under Rafe Cyana's leadership, it has seen a new resurgence with its unusual and experimental designs. 
With its cutting-edge technologies, your vessel will be among the most advanced, but not necessarily the most reliable. Incom slash Subpro Requires Fighter The prolific Incom slash Subpro collaboration produces some of the best and most rugged fighters on the market, from the Z-95 to the Arc-170, both in service with the Republic Starfighter Corps. Your fighter will be extremely tough and easier to repair. Rendili Star Drive Requires not fighter. Once the major supplier of the Republic Navy prior to being eclipsed by KDY, Rendili Star Drive is in the middle of a civil war. If Republic loyalists attempt to continue production, their products still retaining RSD's reputation for durability. Ship mods. With the small craft aftermarket being so prolific, all manner of modifications may be successfully made to a ship. While the majority focus upon increasing its firepower and performance, others might rig their ship with mods intended to improve utility in various ways. Starfighters, being smaller, may have certain mods unavailable to them. Only cruisers, assault ships and star destroyers can take both missile tubes and proton torpedoes. Choose up to as many ship mods as you are allowed to have. Laser cannons. Minus 5 points. Most vessels mount laser cannons as standard, Differing in power according to the ship's size. Though potent enough for a fight, governors can be stripped off and energy input increased to improve firing rate and damage. Ion cannons. Minus 5 points. Ion cannons are an alternative to laser cannons. Firing highly ionized plasma instead, this results in lower accuracy and effective range. However, ion bolts play havoc with electronics and damage shields to a greater extent. Missile tubes, minus 7 points. Concussion missiles lack the ability to penetrate shields of proton torpedoes, but are cheaper, longer ranged, and capable of tracking for further. Due to being able to fit more tubes in, missiles are also capable of a greater rate of fire. Proton torpedoes, minus 7 points. Notable for their ability to bypass shields, proton torpedoes pack a massive punch when they land. They are also considerably more maneuverable than concussion missiles due to their size, but cannot chase targets for as far. Hyperdrive. Minus 10 points. While the fighters in Republic service lack hyperdrives capable of light speed travel, and use hyperspace rings with enough effort they can be installed, it is easier for larger vessels, though better drives are extremely expensive. Sublight engines. Minus 10 points. Tweaking the output of the stock engines, or installing new ones, can achieve substantial improvements to sublight power. These aftermarket mods often include a boost mode to drastically increase top speed at the cost of energy consumption. Performance, minus 10 points. A ship's performance in and out of atmosphere may be improved through a wholesale redesign of the basic frame, alternating aerodynamics. Auxiliary thrusters are also installed to improve agility and a minor boost to top speed. Shielding, minus 10 points. It is possible to install more capable systems than those available with stock models, though this is hard for fighters and corvettes. The efficacy of improved shields increases with ship size through additional redundant generators. Hull, minus 10 points. Through minor improvements in design and replating with larger plates of stronger metals, hull strength may be improved. Non-starfighters have the capacity for the addition of redundant compartments and thicker armour. Point defence. Minus 10 points. Requires not starfighter. Most ships have point defence systems installed, but these can be modified to improve tracking rate, range and accuracy to improve their effectiveness against starfighters and missiles. Stealth. Minus 12 points. Requires corvette or frigate. Instead of one of the alleged cloaking systems, sensor-absorbing paints and materials are used to cover your ship, reducing its heat and emission signature to improve its stealthiness. Life support, minus 5 points. All Jedi starfighters and larger have integral life support, negating the need for a full space suit. This package adds to countermeasures against atmosphere loss, increases onboard supplies including air, water, food and medicine. Electronics. Minus 10 points. Upgrades to the targeting computer and scanning systems, installation of a whole new modern electronic suite, allows for greater flexibility. Passive and active scanning is greatly improved in and out of space, as is hit accuracy. 
Containment, minus 10 points. Requires not Starfighter. A containment or high security storage or panic compartment may be installed using top of the line technology to secure what or whoever you are carrying. Power generation, minus 10 points. By installing more powerful turbines, more power is available for all purposes, from overcharging weapons to boosting shield arrays or engine output. This is exceptionally potent on larger vessels that have more room. Slave rigging, minus 10 points. Requires not Starfighter. Manpower intensive ships can have their requirements reduced by slave rigging, mass automation of systems. Technically this is less capable than as a full crew, but they have a habit of dying. Expanded hangar, minus 10 points, requires not Starfighter. Improvements may be made to the Starfighter carrying capacity of ships, from additional docking points to optimizations in hangar design. Launch and recovery rate is also improved. Deploy spat, minus 10 points, requires assault ship or star destroyer. The spat is the largest Republic ground artillery piece, basically a giant turbo laser beam. It can be rigged up to the power systems of a capital ship to offer crippling and accurate strikes. Custom paint job, minus one point, requires not cruiser or star destroyer. While retaining Republic markings is mandatory, the Jedi Order is less concerned about a custom paint job if you can scrounge up the paint for it. This does not count as a ship mod. Rebuild. Minus 15 points. A wholesale rebuild of your craft could be requested. It will be taken in hand to fully overhaul the design according to your requirements. Take two additional ship mods. Don't count this as one. Personal unit. Requires purchase of equipment, personal unit, to access this section. You were given authority to lead a unit in these trying times. With the war being so broad and encompassing, a wide variety of commands were available. Some Jedi who eschewed open combat would lead groups from behind the scenes as an addition to their existing investigatorial research work. Others would lead existing formations directly from the front. With clones having become a vital part of the war, the composition of your command was no easy choice and as important as ever. Choose one unit type. Republic Militia, free, type, non-clone. Not all of those fighting for the Republic were clones or Jedi. Volunteers race from all around, the non-clone forces in Republic service are unseen, but a critical role in the war. Militia are the lowest level, local groups who have undergone some modicum of training beforehand, or learned on the job. Take up to three unit modifiers. Republic Soldier, minus five points, type, non-clone. These are the Republic's true sons, carrying an ancient legacy as old as the Republic itself. Both pre-war careerists and current vets, these are the Republic's non-clone professionals, regardless of what role they fulfill. They have a higher aptitude for independent thinking than clone formations, for all that entails. Take up to five unit modifiers. Clone Trooper, free, type clone. The bulk of the Grand Army of the Republic, Clone Troopers are identical clones of the bounty hunter Django Fett, produced with accelerated growth and intensive training by the Kaminoans. They are indoctrinated to be good soldiers, to follow orders without question. Take up to four unit modifiers. Clone Commando, minus seven points, type clone. A subset of clones, Clone Commandos are special operations forces, often working in teams. They are capable of more independent thought and action than regular clones, and are famously adaptable. Some are noted for their sympathy for the Jedi. Take up to five unit modifiers. Can only take size, company, or squad. Arc Trooper, minus 10 points. Type, clone. The advanced recon commandos are the elite pinnacle of the Republic's clone forces, with superior freedom and training. Raised with genetic modifications over their regular brothers, they are fiercely independent and lethal soldiers who work alone or in teams. Take up to six unit modifiers. Can only take a size squad. Unit size. Depending upon Jedi seniority and mission, Jedi may find themselves in command of all sizes of formations, from sector armies to squads. Legions, formations consisting of several battalions, are considered the largest formation where a Jedi might have a significant influence upon how it fights and carries itself. 
Some Jedi spend extended periods as leaders of Kor, but its subformations will be rotated out often enough. Rear Admiral Zenosia, or Neresk Rafay, grant one free unit modifier for networks. Choose one unit size. Network, free. Requires time, non-clone. You command a network. This may be covert or not, and range from spy rings to covert resistance. Take one unit modifier for half price. Squad, free. A unit of 10 soldiers or less. The squad is the smallest formation which a Jedi might expect to coordinate with, typically as part of a covert strike team of some sort. Company, minus five points. Around 100 men, a company is small enough for a single commander to track every member, but large enough to make a major impact tactically. Jedi often work with elite companies. Battalion, minus 10 points. The base tactical unit, a Republic Battalion, is a combined arms formation with its own artillery, air support and armour, and plenty of infantry to back it up on the field of battle. Legion, minus 15 points. Multiple battalions under one command, some legions, like the 501st, maintain a cohesive identity and tradition with a history of working under a particular Jedi. Unit Specialty Ignore this section if size network. Republic formations are typically given a designation based on their intended role in the order of battle. Though the chaos of war inevitably mean that they get used for other purposes entirely, the advanced training and doctoral influence upon the unit affect how it fights its battles. For units smaller than battalion, it is assumed this relates to its parent formation. Choose one unit specialty. Assault, minus four points. Assault and attack formations are noted for their aggression in the attack. Heavy armed, but with less armor than an armored core, they are intended to be an infantry focused spearhead, supported by heavy artillery. Take artillery support for free. Armored, minus four points. Relying upon ATTEs and other armoured vehicles for both infantry support and anti-armour roles. Armoured units are a slow moving but irresistible onslaught, packed full of an all sorts of heavy weaponry. Elite, minus 8 points. A moniker given only to the best units. As the name indicates, elite formations receive additional training to improve the quality of their members, adding to their existing wealth of experience. Take any unit modifier for free. Infantry, free. A standard, no fills formation. Your unit is not particularly known for one specialty or another. The majority of formations in the Republic military have no designation, but carry out their duties just as well as the specialist or elite formations. Mechanized, minus four points. Incorporating a large number of transports, mechanized units are among the most well-rounded units in the Grand Army of the Republic. The additional transport allows them to transport their troops in greater safety but also carry heavier equipment. Take engineers for free. Reconnaissance, minus four points. Devoted towards combat reconnaissance, the various reconnaissance formations of the GAR are fast moving, elusive units that prioritize speed and stealth over extensive staying power in combat. Consequently, they are excellent infiltrators. Take infiltrators for free. Sky, minus four points. Fighter jockeys and those that reign in sky and space. Sky units have greater numbers of flying assets for air superiority and transport. Their infantry elements are also qualified to perform aerial attacks like paratroopers. Take aerial support for free. Star, minus four points. Originally given to units qualified to perform EVA operations as standard. That role has since passed to Nova units. Star units still retain a proficiency at close combat remaining from their original purpose. Take close combat for free. Unit second in command. Your missions move you around far more often than you'd like. Thus a competent second in command is critical to smooth operation of your unit. Fortunately you had a tiny degree of leeway over who that was. For networks, this denotes the second in command of the network and leader of the main cell. For non-networks, it denotes the most senior officer under your command, clone or not. Choose one, second in command. The analyst, three. A former intelligence officer in one of the Sector Defence Forces, this individual transferred to the Republic military after the start of the Clone Wars. They carry out their operations with efficient coldness, having little care for the more personal elements of their job, and get results regardless of their task. Subordinates resent them. The Clone, 
free. A clone bred for command. The clone is a clone officer who works best with other clone forces. Educated through Kaminoan training packages, the clone is an adept commander of small units and his strategy. He suffers institutional bias from non-clones, working poorly with them, and is not suited for subterfuge. The Politico, plus 5 points. A Politico appointee foisted onto you. They have turned out to be a tolerable second in command, translating skill and political intrigue into actions on a map. Their connections will make resupply and reinforcement easier, though they unquestionably care about their own advancement and survival above anything else. The Rogue, free. A former smuggler, thief, and all around criminal, this box crook has willingly exchanged time in a Republic prison for service in the Republic military. They are a natural trickster coming with odd and unique plans and are well connected to the criminal underworld. However, others will disapprove of their presence. The Soldier, free. A solid, loyal, and honest soldier. This officer rose up from the ranks, lacking the refinement or advanced training of other officers. Primarily good at solving problems by shooting at it, the soldier is by no means a subtle figure, but they are unquestionably effective in their actions and will not shirk from giving you blunt advice. Other. Minus two points. Assign one of your associates as your second in command. If network, designate an associate with cell leader. If not network, designate an associate with command authority. If a Jedi, they must be junior to you, e.g. cannot designate a knight to be your second in command if you're a Padawan. In general, allies are better than generic second in commands, but take care not to assign someone underranked. Loyalty All groups have a loyalty to something, above all. In these treacherous times, you wondered who your unit is ultimately loyal to. Choose one as the focus of your unit's loyalty. The Republic. Free. Your unit is committed to the Republic and its ideals of freedom and democracy, flawed as it is. The Chancellor, plus five points. Your unit venerates Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, seeing him as the Republic's only hope. Their home, free. Your unit is ultimately loyal to their home. For clones, this is likely either Kamino or Mandalore. The unit, plus five points. Your unit's loyalty is to themselves, or more properly to the brothers they fight, live and die alongside. You, minus 10 points, requires leadership too. Somehow, you have managed to gain the near total loyalty of your unit. Unit modifiers. As unit experience grows, they begin to force an identity of their own, with favorite tactics being used by its commanders, and with it becoming known for certain feats. Granted free unit modifiers do not count against the unit modifier cap. Choose up to as many unit modifiers as you are allowed to have. Aerial support, minus 10 points. Anywhere from disguised shuttles to gunships and space superiority fighters, aerial support is critical to every operation in the galaxy. Your unit has a large stock of craft and particularly skilled pilots. Armor support, minus 10 points. Cannot take with network. The armoured fists of the Republic. The ATTE can climb vertical walls and punch through armoured plate. Your unit has been assigned heavy armoured elements and excels at coordinating with them. Artillery support. Minus 10 points. Cannot take with network. With heavy artillery always at their disposal, your unit has developed advanced techniques of barrage and counter battery and is adept at avoiding civilian casualties. Blood Brothers. Minus 12 points. Your unit has a particularly strong camaraderie amongst its members, considering themselves a true family. They are unlikely to desert, and will be very resistant to torture or any attempt to turn them against their own. Close combat. Minus 10 points. Though common sense would indicate the sane at range be preferable, your unit is known for its aggression in combat. Entering close or even melee range often, they fight well hand to hand, and lack not in efficacy. Combat stims. Minus 10 points. Under the table, the unit uses non-approved combat stims to improve reaction times in combat and reduce sleep requirements. Dependence in shoes as well as increased sociopathy are long-term detriment to their health. Dirty rogues. Minus 10 points. Requires network. Your network has many friends in low places, extending its information gathering reach, and with more black markers open to you. You also receive tip-offs from the underworld as well. 
Enduring, minus 10 points. Your unit is notoriously capable of taking damage, both to its strength and its morale, without breaking. Conflict rushes over it like a storm. Sacrifices are not common, but accepted as necessary when they occur. Engineers, minus 10 points. Whether assigned extra combat engineers or with its members interested in such matters, your unit is well versed in the use of explosives and in the repair and recovery of all sorts of vehicles. Ground Pounders, minus 10 points. Your unit's ordinary members, soldiers or agents, are noted for their above average skill in infantry combat. They are exceptional starts with blasters and each has a good grip or small unit tactics. Heavy Weapons, minus 10 points. Your unit has a surprisingly large access to heavy weapons, ranging from mounted blasters to handheld Gatling blasters and various types of rocket launchers. They are very good at using them against all targets. Infiltrators, minus 10 points. Your unit is noted for its ability to infiltrate enemy positions without suspicion. This is achieved through widespread skill and stealth, or even through aptitude at impersonating enemy persons. Snipers, minus 10 points. Your unit is noted for its large cadre of snipers, individuals capable of taking and landing shots at very long ranges. These individuals also make exceptional scouts due to their attention to detail and patience. Veteran Officers minus 12 points. Your unit possesses a corps of well trained and experienced officers. These command well in your stead, are hard to fall, and are also unrelenting in training new members up to the unit's current standards. Unconventional Minus 14 points. Requires network. Your network has embraced the dirty side of their job. They excel at various criminal aspects such as slicing and smuggling. They are also highly capable at asymmetric warfare in general. Associates. The Order stressed avoiding attachment, but its members try to remain connected to the galaxy at large. How could they not when the temple was at the heart of Coruscant or galactic politics, or when they were assigned from one corner of the galaxy to the other? They made friends and allies, people they owed favours to and from whom they were owed favours in return. In the temple, some Jedi of similar temperament and skills flocked together, the shared knowledge making them even more powerful in their chosen fields. Others intentionally sought the company of those skilled in other areas, so that they might better appreciate the power of the Force and become balanced. As tensions rose, the Order was dispatched to distant stars, Jedi connecting more now with others, despite the allegations of being stuck in ivory towers. Clone Commanders, Republic Senators, Freedom Fighters and Smugglers. For your travels, you too formed a net of allies of your own. Associate skills do not cover their full array of abilities in detail like the player would. Just what the Associate particularly specialises in. Power level of Associates is intentionally ambiguous, though you may guess according to their cost, rank and described experience. Padawan characters must purchase one Knight or Master as their current Master. This does not have to be the same Jedi as the one they apply the half price discount to. Round up after any discounts if necessary. Choose as many associates as you wish and can afford. Padawans. The next generation of Jedi, and ever the hope of the older generations. Padawans fill a critical role in defining the qualities of the future Jedi. With the onset of conflict across the galaxy once more, only the most fortunate Padawans are chosen by senior Jedi. For many, whether due to being of age or due to their masters dying in some way, they are instead allocated by the Jedi Council based on their temperament and skills. Knights and masters may only purchase one Padawan to be their current Padawan or apprentice. They do not have to be the same Padawan as the one they take the discount on. All Jedi, regardless of rank, can take multiple Padawans as associates, representing friends or those under their official mentorship, unless they have the enemy, Sith. The associate costs must still be paid for these. Sain Larina, minus eight points. The force is with me. Taken from her parents on Genesha, at a relatively advanced age for an initiate, Sain Larina was already a worldly and opinionated child when she entered the care of the Jedi. Though she eventually complied enough with the Jedi lifestyle to be chosen as a Padawan, a strong rebellious streak remained. In particular, she connected the Twi'leks warrior tradition with that of the Jedi Order. In time, she revealed her natural skills as a pilot and tracker. Now, a proud member of the Jedi Order despite her resistance to some of its rules, Cyan has remained confident and self-assured. 
Though not malignantly hearted, she has an unfortunate habit of being rather blasé with communication, resulting in others often thinking the worst of her. Skills. Tracking. Piloting. Terran. Force powers. Force confusion. Command authority. Cell leader. Jason Cullet. Minus eight points. I sense overwhelming darkness, yet all of that may be swept away by a glimmer of light. A mirror Luca Jedi Padawan, Jason Cullet is a model Jedi in many ways. Raised at the temple throughout his life, he never knew nor particularly ceased to know his parents. Instead, he ceased to remediate that by wishing to sense and learn about as many of the various cultures there are in the galaxy. He possesses a degree of wanderlust as a result, and though enjoys the comfort and safety of the temple, would rather be out and about in the wider galaxy. Jason is contemplative for his age, careful and considerate unlike the stereotype of Padawans. Having been born blind like all Miraluka, his command of the force we're sensing is excellent despite his relative inexperience. Skills, analysis, diplomacy, force powers, force sense, command authority, cell leader. Rune Fen, minus eight points. Okay, let's go. Time to go and help some people, or something. Just give me the word. Chipper and warm. Runa Fen is a Padawan originally hailing from the Boo, though largely raised in the temple. Though initially isolated, she quickly found friends among other initiates due to her open-mindedness. In her early training, her nature meant that she took readily towards less physical elements of Jedi work, with a surprisingly swift mind hidden behind her smile. Earnest and seeing the best in others, Runa is good-natured, but perhaps too lenient even for Jedi standards. An off victim of pranks while an initiate, her gullibility and perhaps naivety is something that ought to be addressed before it gets her in greater trouble. Skills, medicine and investigation, force powers, force healing, command authority and cell leader. Vanina and Doni, minus 10 points. That trip my nanny got you. You're welcome by the way. Glad to have me around, huh? A natural tinkerer with an interest in the details of mechanical objects and throughout the universe, Vanina Andoli is one of the Order's engineering prodigies. Nigh perpetually restless, only meditation or something to modify, her lightsaber, a comedy, model starship or else, can keep her still. Surprisingly, she also has a particular aptitude with melee weapons. An energetic, optimistic Marillion, Vanina can still be quite a patient Padawan, approaching a Jedi's need to comprehend the Force with her own wish to understand how things work. However, her youth has largely been spent in the temple, leaving her extremely idealistic and cut off from the larger galaxy. Skills, mechanics, melee combat, force powers, force control, force empathy, command authority, cell leader. Terra Lazun, minus 10 points. The order teaches us to trust the force, yet obey the code. Which one comes first, ultimately? Conflicted and confused, Tolo Zan is representative of a divide within the Jedi Order as a whole. The Morellian Padawan is personally in favour of the Jedi's current role in the galaxy, as guardians of law and order in the Republic. However, the corrupt nature of the Republic has left him in a quandary, forcing him to protect an institution he does not necessarily view as worth protecting. The Jedi Council hopes that a capable master will be able to resolve his struggle. An intense, self-searching Jedi, Terrell's disharmony is the consequence of an ardent desire perhaps need to understand the Force and the purpose of the Jedi Order as a whole. Skills, Security, Piloting, Terran, Force Power, Telekinesis Force Barrier, Command Authority. Ivia Karth, minus 10 points. Age is no indicator of wisdom, nor experience and skill, right? Shouldn't we treat each being for who they are, themselves? With a fluctuating command of the Force while an initiate, Eva Karth was not guaranteed to become a Padawan. To compensate, she threw herself into her training, seeking to not let anyone down. Later it transpired that this was the result of a lack of confidence in herself and in the Jedi Code. Though an eager learner, Avea chafes under the rules of the Order, some of which she considers to be superfluous, leading to her uncertainty. Consistently warm-hearted despite her lack of self-confidence, Avea is an exceptionally hard worker with the belief that regardless of what a Jedi's ultimate purpose is, they should not slack in attempting to achieve it. Skills, Awareness and Stealth. Force Powers, Force Confusion, Force Healing. Command Authority, Cell Leader. 
Lorik Lesson. Minus 11 points. Want to go into Jarek? Everyone refuses to place a bug. They say I cheat since I'm Loridian. Uncivilized brutes, the lot. Originally raised as part of a monastic community, Lorik Lensen was a serious and severe individual from the onset. A Loridian, he is a member of a near human species that are masters of understanding others through body language. However, he prefers his negotiation to be of the aggressive kind, possessing an adept mind for tactics. Despite his stringent adherence to the Jedi Code, born out of his childhood, Lorik's experiences led to him carrying a blaster around on the battlefield. He is at times stilled, his commander's speech curt due to his upbringing. His understanding of body language makes him an easy ear for sounding ideas out, and he can be a surprisingly considerate individual. Skills. Tactics and ranged weapons. Force powers. Force barrier and force control. Command authority and cell leader. Jarell Dretz. Minus 11 points. Septis. Crefum. If they wanted to secede, they didn't have to bomb people. Or is that what everyone does now? A mission that went wrong defined your dreads. Ending up in charge of a group of younglings, he managed to find them back to Republic space, but had to forcibly extract information out of Separatists to get an escape route. His experiences on that mission made him bitter and sarcastic, changing from a Padawan notorious for pulling practical jokes upon others. He was narrowly not censured by the Council. A skilled pilot, particularly of craft larger than starfighters, Jarrell's experiences have made him into a Jedi willing to do many things in order to bring the war to a close. An appropriate master might be able to curb his downward slide and find inner peace, but he will never be a perfect Jedi. Skills. Piloting, space, subterfuge. Force powers, force control, and mental shields. Command authority and cell leader. Ines van Rissa. Minus 11 points. The Force is my guide, trusted and true, a companion in times both troubled and tranquil. A promising sentinel, Anais van Rissa is one of the Order's brightest hopes. Highly flexible, she excels at nearly everything she has put her mind to, though is admittedly less inclined towards more theoretical aspects of Jedi life. Skilled with a lightsaber, her main skills exploit her quick thinking and superb intellect orientated towards the practical. A naturally inquisitive individual, she is rarely fooled and has an eye for detail few possess. A highly balanced individual in terms of temperament and skills, Annie is only diverse from this through her workaholic nature. She is relentless in her search for the truth and in self-improvement, to an extent that might be somewhat off-putting to others. Skills, investigation and espionage. Force powers, force barrier and force empathy. Command authority and cell leader. Knights. A symbol of hope throughout the galaxy. The modern Jedi Order may be caught in its ways, but the current generation of knights may very well be not. Having spent their times as Padawans in an increasingly chaotic galaxy, the Jedi Knights of the current era are as potent as those of earlier times. Isolated though they may be from the Republic, and brought up in a tightly controlled environment, they do not lack for valour or effort. Between Padawans and Masters, Knights are generally less set in their ways than masters and more open to change. They are likely to be more relatable to Padawans as well. Thans Vatana. Minus 12 points. Care to spar? I believe I have reached a new comprehension of Master Cyrus's writings. I'd happily share them. One of the Order's most promising swordsmen, and one in unrelenting search of mastery of as many forms as he can, Thans Vatana was already notably powerful as a Padawan. After becoming a knight, he has continued his quest for lightsaber mastery on the battlefield. However, as the war has intensified, he has often been called to train younglings and padawans to allow more senior Jedi to take the field. Than is well suited for this temperament, being a soft-spoken and gentle individual, honourable in combat. Despite his bookish nature towards the martial arts, he is no less effective at teaching or at fighting in a deadly situation. Skills, training and unarmed combat. Force powers. Force body, force sense, and farsight. Cell leader. Lerwin Neath. Minus 12 points. All life is precious. A Jedi should not focus on taking them, but to save a life that's far harder and for the better. A kind, affectionate Jedi with a particularly strong pacifistic streak, Lerwin Neath is one of the Jedi Order's healers. 
While trained to use a lightsaber as any other Jedi is, she is much more comfortable in a non-action role, skilled in mundane and force-based healing. One of a faction of Jedi that feel that the Order has lost its way, she is a stringent proponent of meditation and skilled at encouraging others to enter healing trances. Lowen's adamant attitude towards the Jedi Order's current path has led to the occasional disagreement with more militant Jedi, some of whom find her overbearing, though she does not intend to be so, being compassionate to all living things. Skills, medicine and research, force powers, force revitalize, force healing, force empathy. Sonera Jainora, minus 12 points. The code encourages suppression of fear, not denial of it. Courage only sprouts from the roots of fear. Sainara Jainora is a dependable, potent Jedi, one who does not particularly specialize in one area or another. Warm and empathetic, she is equally suited to negotiation as she is to the battlefield, where she excels with her twin lightsabers. Dedicated to the Order, she is somewhat willing to bend the rules to save or protect others, but not enough for her own benefit. A charismatic individual who readily makes friends through her easygoing nature, Sonara is extremely loyal to her friends that in turn inspires great loyalty. Committed to the betterment of all, she is strong-willed, but not to the point of arrogance. Skills, persuasion and unarmed combat. Force powers, animal bonding, force sense, force healing. Command authority and cell leader. Razin, minus 12 points. No, I would not say you tinny. For his sake, get your electronic translator fixed or find a protocol droid. Criff, I'll do it myself. A rare Jawa Jedi. Zin hails not from Tatooine, but from Raxus Prime, discovered from among the small Jawa clans living on the waste covered planet. With exceptional talent in tinkering, he has since become one of the Order's premier engineers, performing upgrades with Jedi or assisting in the Temple Hangar. This has led him to many contacts within the defense industry. Busy and industrious, Razin is rarely in one place, always seeking something to tinker with. His odd manner can be difficult to bear with, but it is the result of past social seclusion rather than any particular malignant intent. Though mainly known for his skill with tools, he is a skilled user of the Force, using telekinesis in lieu of intensely studying the art of the lightsaber. Skills, mechanics and slicing, force powers, force whirlwind, telekinesis, force confusion. Command Authority, Cell Leader. Valera Dinar, minus 12 points. Our target came through here about two hours ago. We must hurry. We can't let them get away with this. A Mira Luka Jedi specializing in tracking, Valera Dinar is not so much a Jedi investigator as a criminal chaser. Lacking the natural guile of Jedi investigators who often go undercover, Valera instead prefers to act in the shadows, between the darkness of the underworld and the light of civilization. Seeking to help the ordinary individual being victimized by malignant or inconsiderate forces across the galaxy, Valera has intentionally sought an assignment away from the front lines. Reflective, and caught between the Order's multitude of duties, Valera finds peace and wholeness in achieving good in the galaxy, though is increasingly distressed over how muddled the Jedi's task has become. Skills, tracking and athletics, force powers, battle precognition, force sense, farsight. Cell Leader. Jane Alissi, minus 12 points. You know, I thought of ways to die that are considerably less humiliating than what you're about to do. A Jedi of great potential, Jane Alissi's time as a Padawan was defined when she and her master were separated in Nar Shaddaa, on the run for months with a bounty on their heads from a hut crime lord. She survived, managing to get him extracted to Coruscant, and gained a reputation for pragmatism under fire. Since then, she has served as a spy, intelligence gatherer, and point of contact for many Republic sympathizers in Hut or CIS space. Building up a tough and sarcastic exterior to strengthen herself against future incidents, Jane remains compassionate and merciful underneath. She displays these traits far too often for her own liking, though is all too happy to throw japes at herself. Skills, subterfuge and stealth. Force powers, force stasis, force confusion, and mental shields. Cell Leader. Zhang Corcris, minus 14 points. I wield my blade through the approval of the Force, and prepare to fight and take lives through the approval of the Force. A Zabrak Jedi, Zhang Corcris is a methodical, compulsive Jedi. 
Though a supporter of the Republic, he has taken a stance against the militarization of the Jedi, arguing that he is a servant of the Force and of people in general, rather than a government in particular. To this end, he is often given bodyguard assignments away from the front line, a job he excels at. Zan's austere nature makes him a perfect fit for the role, however his brusqueness over the Jedi's role in society has not endeared him to his charges. However his valour, and his insistence of the Jedi's primary role as being the defeat of the Sith, has been evident on many occasions. Skills, melee combat and security. Force powers, force whirlwind, force control and telekinesis. Cell leader, command authority. Shosh Rin, minus 14 points. It is said that he who forgets history is doomed to repeat it. No, he who does not understand history is doomed to repeat it. One of the Order's Jedi's archaeologists, Shosh Rin follows an venerable tradition of Keldor Jedi Consulars. A respected scholar of the early Republic, Rin's digs have taken him across the galaxy. So prized are some of the artifacts at these sites, that he has gained a quiet reputation among the research community for having defended dig sites against treasure hunters. A stoic yet inquisitive Jedi, Shosh Rin's thirst for knowledge, a borderline violation of the Jedi Code, has gotten him in trouble before. Still, he has continued with his trademark relentless, certain that revealing the truth of ages past will solve the issues with the alien republic of the day. Skills, research, knowledge history, force powers, force repulse, farsight, force confusion, command authority and cell leader. Inara Hellis, minus 14 points. If somebody would stop irritating the Under Ambassador, we might actually get somewhere in these talks. Martel sends a Padawan due to being one of the few Jedi capable of performing battle meditation consistently. Inaria Hellis is a powerful Jedi adept in a wide variety of fields despite her age. Though it is battle meditation that makes her one of the select few, she is naturally much more inclined towards diplomacy, a careful and persuasive negotiator. Confident, perhaps proud, Inaria is a tightly wound individual who attempts to wear a mask in public, bottling up her emotions. This is an attempt to deal with her building stress and has resulted in her pushing her few friends away, but if you manage to crack that facade, you will find an utterly loyal friend. Skills, Diplomacy and Persuasion, Force Powers, Battle Meditation, Mental Shields, Force Barrier, Command Authority and Cell Leader. Borea. Minus 14 points. Greetings, friend. It is an honor to be at your side today. I sense darkness nearby. Shall we illuminate it? One of the few Wookiee Jedi, Borea combines his species' immense strength and endurance with the calm and reason of a Jedi Knight, even when angered. With a close connection to nature, like all Wookiees, Borea has committed himself to fighting against those who seek to destroy life in the galaxy, sentient or not. Incapable of speaking basic, though he can understand it, and openly capable of speaking Shuyawook. Borea's eloquence is limited by how he communicates via a reportable electronic translator, and more often via the Force. He is a trusting individual, with a characteristic deep loyalty that all Wookiees possess towards those closest to them. Skills Unarmed Combat and Survival Force Powers Force Light Force Barrier and Force Empathy Command Authority Zri, minus 14 points. A Jedi can't be one without their heart. That's also compassion and faith. Don't let darkness distort yours. Despite appearing at first glance like a Sith, Zri is a Zeltron Jedi Knight, rejoicing in the light side of the Force. Rescued from slavers by the Jedi Order, she is utterly committed to the light side after the darkness she saw in her youth. After becoming a Knight, she is largely committed to helping deprived communities out on the fringes of the Republic. Though possessing the stereotypical flirtatious nature of the Zeltrons, Zri only shares in their hedonism in the philosophy that she believes that every day should be taken for itself, rather than surrendering to the pursuit of pleasure. Skills, Athletics and Survival Force Powers, Force Light, Force Confusion, Force Empathy Command Authority, Cell Leader Crash Wall, Minus 14 Points Remain Vigilant, Know That the dark side of the Force is unrelenting in his thirst, as are his disciples. Remain vigilant. On his way to mastery, 
Crush Warrell was a Jedi peacekeeper before the Clone Wars, entrusted with resolving conflicts, particularly in the colonies and expansion region. Crush's experiences have led him to becoming one of the more militaristic Jedi, favouring surgical strikes instead of deploying the Jedi as regular officers. Increasingly unhappy about the course of the war and the Council's decisions, he is increasingly distanced from it. A stern, exacting, meticulous Jedi, Crash, despite his disagreements with the Council, has his patience tested regularly and hires conflict over how to resolve his predicament. He is still a firm leader and teacher despite this. Skills Leadership and Strategy Force Powers Shatterpoint Telekinesis Farsight Command Authority and Cell Leader Masters The most experienced and powerful members of the Order. Masters only become one after the careful consideration from the Jedi Council. Noted for their skill with the Force and the lightsaber, even among those who demure from combat, Jedi Masters' most valuable asset is arguably their experience, both practical and in the Force. By associating with Jedi Masters, you, regardless of rank, will find your understanding of the Force increasing as they share their understanding, particularly if you are a Padawan. Furthermore, a life spent travelling across this galaxy has not only left them in tune with the Force in themselves, and an appreciation for the subtleties, but also a wide network of friends, confidence, and informants. Baltran. Minus 15 points. Ready? Good. Await my signal. You will know it when you sense it. Know thyself, and know thy enemy. Mandalorians are infamous for being Jedi hunters. Baltran is a Jedi Mandalorian hunter. An orphan taken from a wrecked Mandalorian raiding frigate originating from Kalevala. Baltran originally resisted the Jedi Order's authority. Decades later, he has shared his name and clan, and has spent years out in the Outer Rim against the galaxy's worst. Often dispatched to hunt down serial killers and assassins, Baltran has seen the darkness out there in the galaxy, and remained resolute. A hard, pragmatic Jedi, Baltran may appear to be on the edge of falling. That could not be further from the truth, for he has redirected his emotions towards resisting and fighting the dark. Skills Tracking, Subterfuge, and Demolitions. Force Powers Battle Precognition, Force Body, Force Barrier, Mental Shields. Command Authority and Cell Leader. Jura Eskiel, minus 15 points. Trying to keep up? Good. The Force rewards effort, as you will have seen, but remember, there is no try. Having spent much of his time as a Padawan and a knight in the Outer Rim fighting pirates and slavers, Master Jura Eskil is one of the Order's most experienced pilots, balancing Rodian aggression with the calm of a true Jedi Master. Most of the time at least. Confident and opinionated to the verge of arrogance, Master Eskil is convinced of the endemic corruption in the Republic. Further still, he considers the modern Order to unable to keep up with the changing times, Still, he possesses the easy, lazy manner of fighter jocks, and is not uncompanionable if you're on his good side. Skills. Piloting, space. Astrogation. Piloting, terror. Force powers. Force stasis. Force body. Farsight. Force confusion. Command authority and cell leader. Sala Teris. Minus 15 points. Let the light of the force guide you. Let you use it to bring light across the galaxy. One of the Jedi Order's foremost ambassadors, Sala Tiris is a veteran mediator, having worked with the diplomatic corps and senate for most of her career, and is well respected for her moderation and reason. She has the ears of many individuals behind the scenes, but refuses to use these connections for self-benefit. Patient and slow to anger, the Togruten Jedi has the ideal qualities for a diplomat, capable of hiding her disquiet and the types of people she might have to bring to the table. This translates well to training Erin Padawans and initiates, whenever she finds the time to. Skills Diplomacy, Training and Leadership Force Powers Force Revitalize, Animal Bonding, Telekinesis and Force Empathy Cell Leader Nenef Talithal Minus 16 points To stumble is to be mortal Getting up, one of the hardest challenges of all, but it's the most important. Possessed of a similar skill set to Temple Guards, Master Talithal is one of the former Sentinels in the Order. However, she prefers to utilise her skills outside of the Temple, feeling that she would be best able to help the galaxy in such a manner. A Jedi of action, 
whilst a Talithar's behaviour can flip in an instant. She is usually rather relaxed and vivacious, an easygoing and kind teacher whom many are fond of. In action, however, she may appear to turn into a wordless automaton, fully immersed in the Force. She accomplishes her duties as a Jedi investigator with much the same seriousness, with as much rigour as any veteran detective. Skills Investigation Stealth and Espionage Force Powers Force Immunity Force Repulse Force Sense Mental Shields Theris Thalo Minus 16 points Easy now Breathe, that's it In, out Let go and let the Force in It will always be there While most Quorum followed their Senator in defecting to the Confederacy not all of them did. Jedi Master Theris Thelo is a respected Jedi healer, adept in both mundane and force healing. However, he is a rare sight of the temple. Skilled at performing missions in dangerous territory, Master Thelo prefers to carry out missions of mercy behind enemy lines, helping isolated Republic holdouts wherever possible. A quiet, contemplative Jedi, Thelo is a Jedi of few, albeit loquacious words. A mild adherent of the living force, Thelo prefers to not use his blade where he can but instead the Force. Skills Medicine, Training and Persuasion Force Powers Force Cloak Force Revitalize, Force Healing Force Barrier Cell Leader Haruf Astros Kin Minus 18 points Trust in yourself Trust in your training Trust in each other Trust in the Force For the Republic! Devoted Servant of the Republic Master Astros Kin is an unconventional Jedi. Having spent much of his career assisting the judicial forces, Astros Kin took readily to leadership in the Grand Army of the Republic. Capable of performing battle meditation, this in conjunction with his natural aptitude for strategy has made him a steady firefighter for the Republic military, resolving strategic crises wherever needed. Astros Kin is a cool, efficient Jedi with an attitude not too unlike a stern father, but with an undercurrent of warmth underneath. It is an attitude he gives his subordinates, and one he extends to the relatively few he trusts. Skills Strategy, Leadership and Tactics Force Powers Battle Meditation, Shatterpoint, Force Control and Farsight Thea Cell Minus 20 points While you still draw breath, no matter how dire it might be, know that hope and the Force will not abandon you. Amira Luka Jedi Sentinel. Master Zell serves as the Jedi Watchman of the Fast Ace Sector, placing the adopted Moluka homeworld of Alphaledrodice under her care. Responsible for the quiet safeguarding of those worlds and the testing of Force sensitives there, she has a close connection with Moluka Jedi in the Order, many of which she discovered. Reclusive and elusive, with a slight wistful smile, Master Zell's independence from the Jedi Council has led her to be quite free thinking. Still, she follows the code, retaining her kind's antipathy towards the Sith. She is cunning, clever, and her mannerisms belie her considerable power in the Force. Skills Tracking, Stealth, and Awareness Force Powers Force Immunity, Force Cloak, Force Sense, and Farsight Calthering Kenarest Minus 20 points War makes promises of paper, and monsters of men. Surrender is all too easy. Ensure that it does not happen to you. A veteran of the last war, Master Kenarest is one of the Order's leading minds on swordcraft and combat, flawless earned through earned experience at the Republic's flashpoints. Yet he is rarely seen in Coruscant, preferring the ruins of the old enclave on Dantooine. A diffident, aloof Jedi controlling turbulent memories of the past, Kenarest unleashes his emotions in combat for a lethal form seven free hybrid. However, it is not the past sends him away from Coruscant. Instead, his experiences have made him look even deeper into the Jedi Code, meditating and searching for whatever meaning its writers have added that have yet to be discerned. Skills Melee weapons, tactics and survival Force powers Advanced to Menace, Shatterpoint, Force Barrier, Mental Shields Sirenis Minus 20 points Understanding is what all Jedi strive, but you cannot reach it as readily as time flies, you must earn it. Never stop questioning. An Achani heading from their homeworld of Ashan, Serenius was taken in late to the Order. However, she quickly adapted its ways, with a strong interest in the Force. Since then, she has become an authority on the nature of the Force, 
one of the Order's greatest theorists. Swimming in the light side, she was also one of his most potent wielders. Serenius is a calm, affectionate Jedi Master with Willa Frick. A Jedi Moderate, she is always open for discourse with those of differing views in the Order. That said, she is increasingly concerned about the militarization of the Order, and more importantly, the Shadow in the Force. Skills Research Leadership Knowledge The Force and Jedi Law Force Powers Sever Force Force Light Telekinesis and Mental Shields Contacts Though Jedi do not necessarily have entourages following them, as they may have done in the past, many modern Jedi still possess contacts among the non-Jedi, individuals who may be relied upon to different extents. Typically called upon for information the Order does not possess, some are willing to do even more for the Jedi if necessary. With the Order being so intimately involved in galactic politics and the course of the war, so many of these contacts were inevitably individuals related to those fields. Those that were not, useful allies of convenience who could ensure that the Order kept its place or that the Republic's position remained secure. Growing smaller still were those the Jedi looked to for potential wisdom, such had the Order turned inwards as it began focused on outward matters. Clone Commander Rook, minus 10 points. All formations reach their stepping off points without detection, General. Ready to launch the counter-attack. CC-5246, Rook, is one of a select few among the millions of clones of Jango Fett. A clone commander, he is capable of greater free thinking and capacity for leadership than his fellow clones on a genetic basis, in addition to further training both as a clone commander and as an ARC trooper. A veteran soldier who fought at the First Battle of Geonosis, Rook eschews the more flashy and unorthodox tactics of some Jedi for precise application of superior firepower. A good, dependable soldier noted for his low casualty rates. That being said, he has become rather oddly protective of Jedi after he took their piece of shrapnel to the head back on Ossus, though his performance hasn't suffered for it. Skills Tactics Strategy Leadership Ranged Weapons and Training Command Authority Clone Lieutenant Furnace Minus 10 points. Finally joined us, eh, boss? About time! Hey, Clankers, eat this, you rust buckets! Get some! On me, boys! CT6834, Furnace, is an advanced recon commando, an elite among the clones of the Grand Army of the Republic, serving as both special operations and officers. One member of the second generation of ARCs, Furnace has served since mid phase of the war, typically in various covert operations behind enemy lines or in support of Jedi. Irrelevant, sarcastic, and very independently minded, Furness has the extensive knowledge and attitude of weapons that most Ark Troopers possess, particularly heavy weapons. In particular, he favours the Z6 Rotary Blaster Cannon. With a more cursory eye towards authority, whether Republic officer, clone, Jedi, or otherwise, Furness is, regardless, utterly loyal to his friends. Skills Ranged weapons, demolitions, athletics, unarmed combat, and security. Command Authority. Clone Commando Galvin. Minus 10 points. All Ocra call sign status green. Visuals on the target. Ready to execute General. RC3765 Galvan is a clone commando. A highly trained clone bred to work together in teams. More independent than the regular clone troopers. Less so than the ARCs. Clone Commanders are still highly capable operators, known for the usage of the modular DC-17M interchangeable weapon system. The leader of Arca Squad, Galvan is a firm, confident leader who resists every attempt to split up his squad. Often working with Jedi behind enemy lines, Galvan prefers it when both can work off each other's strengths. A true believer in the Republic and in democracy, the sentiment was spurred out of a desire to understand the Confederates he will be facing for a hobbyist interest in galactic governance. Skills Tactics, ranged weapons, security, training, unarmed combat, command authority and cell leader. Rear Admiral Zenosia, minus 20 points. Remember this, Master Jedi, for the Republic. Daughter of a noble family from 1004, Rear Admiral Alana Zenosia is among the youngest flag officers in the Republic. Instead of a field command, however, she is a Bureau Chief of Republic Intelligence, with responsibilities over part of the Northern Outer Rim. Specialising in analysis, Zenosia quickly climbed the ranks for her own successes and her family's influence. Though predominantly working with the regular Republic military, her station has resulted in her cooperating with the Jedi at times. 
ambiguous but self-assured. Zenosia is an uncertainty in the game, but then all spooks really are. A tough, ruthless woman who puts up a facade, is it a facade? Of icy noble airs. Two things about her are clear. She is utterly loyal to the Republic, and utterly efficient. Skills. Analysis, espionage, strategy, subterfuge, Asha navigation. Senator Mina Prelict. Minus 20 points. A pleasure as always, Master Jedi. How might I assist you today? Neither a Hawk of Palpatine's faction, or from the Darvis of Organa and Amidala's group, Mina Prelict is the senator from Druia, a crucial fortress world along the Hydean Way. Though the corporations on her planet would see an escalation of the war, her constituents would not, leaving her divided. Her planet's wealth and influence leaves her the leader of a collection of independent senators sought after by both war and peace factions. A witty, intelligent woman with plenty of experience in the political sphere, Senator Prelict is a useful contact for the Order through her political and defence industrial connections. She is one of a decreasing number of non-corrupt independent senators, and one with enough personal clout and charisma to not be beholden to anyone. Skills. Diplomacy. Persuasion. Leadership. Analysis. Knowledge. Galactic politics. Nereska Fay. Minus 12 points. Took you long enough, Jedi. Not all of us have as much time as you do. Now, here's what you wanted. Though Botha Weave remains neutral in the Clone Wars for political reasons, not all Bothans feel the same way. While their species is known for their dizzying intrigue and backstabbing, there is no shortage of Republic patriots among them. Nereska Frey is one such Bothian, a senior intelligence agent of the Spynet, a long-term insider for the Jedi Council. After the Council ordered you to cover his escape after he lost his cover, Refrey claims to owe you an unpayable debt. Paranoid and methodical, few would doubt that he is a highly capable spy, achieving big breaks Republic or Jedi informants fail to provide. Though you might wonder, how much can you actually trust him? Skills. Espionage. Stealth. Investigation. Slicing. Survival. Cell Leader. Branitera. Minus 12 points. Get on with it, Jedi. What is it you want? The heir presumptive to Clan Itera. Bran Itera is neither new Mandalorian or Death Watch. He has inherited his family's historic dislike of the Sith, making him more inclined to oppose Vizsla's Death Watch. However, he considers Satine Kreese's new Mandalorians to be suicidal pacifists. Preferring to wait on the silence and deal with whoever made it out, Itera plies his trade as a bounty hunter and assassin, without particular care for his employer. An experienced bounty hunter lacking a flair for the dramatic, Itera goes about his business with a sombre efficiency. Possessing some of the honour of the Mandalorians of old, Itera largely refuses to perform exceptionally morally questionable acts as it would make him seem easy to buy, but he is cheap enough to talk of allies of convenience. Skills. Ranged weapons. Demolitions. Piloting space. Tracking. Piloting Terran. Cell leader. Thalia Sende. 12 points. Still alive, glow stick? Cancel still riding? Hey, did you drop that storage chip? Guess those rogues don't have any pockets. Carrying on an old tradition of smugglers helping the Republic against forces that were less palatable to the underworld, Thalia Sende is one of the best in the business. That is to say, one who few have heard of apart from those in the know. A listed transporter of less legal commodities, ranging from restricted tech to farmer quality chems, Sender refuses to move slaves or weapons due to it generating too much heat, but perhaps moral reasons too. With a habit of changing identities and always being on the move, one of the few qualities she has retained is that she is allegedly one of the Order's friends in the underworld. Curling and slippery, Sender undoubtedly has a code of honour, though where it starts and ends is anyone's guess. Skills Smuggling Piloting space, mechanics, astrogation, slicing, cell leader. Court, minus 10 points. All right, wizard. What brings it like you down here? You hear about the hit was put out on, what was their name again? All around underhanded rogue, Court is a Nautolan who has dabbled in every criminal trade from smuggling to forgery and is currently attempting the trade of bounty hunting. Born a slave on Arami, Court has been everywhere in the Outer Rim, with a friend in every bar and spaceport, or so he claims. 
Rarely is the information that comes out of the incessantly chattering Nell Twillen's mouth wrong, if you bother to listen. An enthusiastic worker, Cord gleefully goes about taking his paycheck, no matter how bloody or unethical it may be, relishing in his lack of nuance. Though it's possible he may be more complex, it will take a lot of effort and guile to ghost it out of him. Skills, awareness, subterfuge, smuggling, athletics and demolitions. Cell leader. Dr. Natasi Finos. Minus 15 points. Oh, please, Master Jedi, no need to stop on my account. As undergraduates, we used to dodge corporate snipers on Thyfera. A senior researcher at a Republic governmental laboratory, Dr. Natasi Finos is one of the top minds in biomedicine and biochemistry, having pioneered recent advances in back to application. After being tasked to advise the Senatorial Oversight Committee of the Clone Production Facilities of Campino, she grew increasingly suspicious about their methods. Evidently, people grew suspicious about her, as she was assigned a promotion to a med centre near Ord Kestis. Questioning, rigorous, and a surprisingly deft hand with a blaster, Dr. Phenos is surprisingly called under fire, which she accredits to a particularly extraordinary set of experiences while an undergraduate. That said, she is far more comfortable in the lab. Skills, research, medicine, knowledge, biochemistry, analysis, and persuasion. Ari Tylona, minus 15 points. I do pity you Jedi sometimes, all tightly wound in those drab cloaks. The code doesn't require celibacy, I understand. A singer and dancer at an exclusive high-class Coruscanti nightclub, Ari Tylona possesses a great deal of soft power in core world politics. Within the nightclub's velvet curtain walls, secrets flow freely through liberal application of alcohol and heady drugs. Ari is extremely sought after, not only for her incredible voice or alluring dances, but for her easy, captivating charisma, capable of wrapping seasoned politicians around her finger. Probably an informant for at least ten different organisations or people, and unashamed about it, it is no secret that she is privy to some secrets that people would rather not be out in the open. Yet while she manages to play the cross and to lead against each other, she thrives. Skills. Art. Persuasion. Subterfuge. Athletics. Awareness. Darob. Minus ten points. Expelled and exiled from the force of Sean. Through struggles hard and dire, a new saviour was born. An Athorian monk who has shed his last name. Darob is a mendicant who travels from world to world. In exchange for lodgings or charity, he offers to entertain his hosts or their other guests with tales of the Republic of Old. With a great memory, assisted for his use of all literature, he tells tales of hardship, struggle and victory among strife-covered stars thousands of years ago through song and poetry, keeping audiences enraptured. A gentle, humble and unassuming individual, those with an interest in galactic history will be surprised to realise that some of de Rob's tales allegedly tell more about the past than current extant histories do. On two occasions, his recited accounts were found to accurately match historical records that were only discovered later. Skills Knowledge, History, Art, Alarms Combat, Diplomacy, Survival. Eugenia Starfall, minus 18 points. You're one of them, aren't you? Stay away. I don't want to hurt you, but I still know how to use the Force. Once a Jedi youngling, Eugenia Starfall was sent to the Agricorps by the Council due to lacking Force ability. Having run away, she is now a fugitive Force user. After a failed attempt to become a stage magician, she was recently enslaved by Black Sun Enforcer's operation on Trigalis, forced to be a dancer. Though she has been enslaved, she is also terrified about a recent spate of kidnappings of other Order runaways by other Force sensitives. Should you manage to free her and earn her trust, an exceedingly difficult task considering her fears, you may find that an inkling of her initial idealism may have survived, and that somehow, the Order had got rid of a Force sensitive with tremendous potential. Skills Athletics Survival Art Force powers Force sense Telekinesis Force healing Oriana Crespin Minus 20 points Not lost yet, Jedi. Are you? An independent Force sensitive, Oriana Crespin is what most in the know would call a Grey Jedi, walking the line between the light and dark sides without falling wholly to the dark. Raised and brought up away from the Order, she has so far avoided it, content to stay and protect her home. However, as Darkness mounts, she has decided to act, assisting the Jedi Order from the shadows, 
preferring its continued influence over the dominance of the Sith. Refusing to consider the Force a two-sided aspect, Oriana would argue incessantly about the Force of Yuleta. Generally, she is an affable companion, about one who does not resist the urge to throw barbs at the Jedi Order's perceived faults whenever she can. Skills. Awareness. Melee combat. Knowledge, Grey. Force powers. Force cloak. Force stasis. Force control. Mind shields. Cell leader. R4 M27. Minus six points. R4 plus Jedi. Ready to go. An industrial automation R4 series astromech droid, R4M27, like most other R4 series droids in the Jedi Order, was ordered with an R2 series head. This combines the durability of the R4 series with the quick think in the R2 series dome, making it ideal for the high intensity situation the Order's droids were likely to find themselves in. A sincere chipper droid, like most R2s, R4 is a well travelled Order astromech, albeit one which is yet to have a designated master and one who turns out to have repeatedly skipped memory wipes. Typical to similar droids, R4 can perform all manners of calculations from starfighter management to data bank analysis to network manipulation. Like other astro droids, R4 verbally communicates in binary, though you may catch on rather quickly if you did not know it beforehand. Skills, piloting, space, astrogation, slicing, mechanics, piloting, terror. Missions. Even when you were an initiate, you were dispatched on missions by the Jedi Order. However, it was when you became a Padawan that this became standard. When the Clone Wars began, the time you had at the Temple became increasingly intensified as the Republic and the Jedi were stretched thin, time that became ever precious. The Order largely dispatched you on missions that you were suited for, based upon your skills and personality. However, as more Jedi were lost, whoever was closest or nearest was often called upon. The war drove deeper divides within the Order. Some felt the main priority was the defence of the Republic, others the defeat of the Sith, others still the protection of the weak and vulnerable. So was the Order flung across the galaxy, its members conflicted and lacking the surety of the past into the crystal of conflict. Now, much later, you can look back at your earlier missions and see the Republic slide towards war, and your later missions, and the inevitable tragedy that would befall the galaxy. Choose five missions from this section. Initiation Crews Jedi initiates were occasionally taken on missions outside of the temple, so that they might experience the Force in new situations and be prepared for future missions they might experience in the future. Such missions were largely accompanied by a master, or a number of knights. After the reappearance of the Sith prior to the Battle of Naboo, increased security was placed upon these missions by an order, concerned about Sith potentially attempting to kidnap Force sensitives for their own machinations. After getting underway, the crews had suddenly lost power, as the occupants battled to restore the ship's systems, it came under a harrowing attack from pirate vessels. Though the craft was crash landed without loss of life, those aboard were harassed by the local wildlife and crashed pirates until they could be rescued. Murder a Moonalist After multiple high profile murders on the intergalactic banking clan headquarters of Moonalist, corporate espionage was suspected. As the Republic's preeminent banking organisation, these murders threw its board of shareholders into disarray and the markets quavered in anticipation and uncertainty. The judicial forces were sent in to investigate, and, faced with the enormity of the situation, asked the Jedi Order for assistance. Two teams were allocated, one to mediate the legal disputes between the parties involved, and another to investigate the murders themselves. Among the marble skyscrapers you found a den of intrigue, greed, ruthlessness, and murder. Only after the start of the Clone Wars did you realise that the Sith may have been involved intending to move the banking clan against the Republic. Securing the past Once home to a secret Jedi Academy, the world of Telos IV has been ravaged again and again by past wars. Now again, a booming economic centre showing none of its past scars, and located on the northern section of the Hidian Way, concerns over Telos being cut off in a future conflict move the Jedi Council to action. Feeling that overt action would further inflame tensions, you were dispatched to Telos IV to attempt to gauge Telosian opinion. While there, you learned of rumours about the secret Jedi Academy on the planet, filled with holocrons. Thus, your priority became the securing of the holocrons, whether through locking them away or smuggling them away. However, all of this would occur on a fearful planet watching your every public move. 
You were strictly ordered to not let any backlash from your actions swing Telos away from the Republic. Geonosis. One day, Master Windu asked for volunteers for a mission of utmost danger, a task from which few would be likely to return. As the rumours abound, Master Yoda came around later, asking for the brightest minds of the Order to join him. Regardless, many Jedi followed the two Masters to take part in a mission to which they were sworn to secrecy. The purpose, only revealed when you were en route, was to rescue Knight Kenobi, Padawan Skywalker, and perhaps most importantly, Senator Amidala of Naboo from Capture and Genosis. Yet there was also a hope that bossed around that. If the Force willed it, the Confederacy could be stopped from seceding from the Republic, for arresting the ringleaders under the crime of impeding and impersonating a Republic Senator. Under the baking heat of the Genosian sun, and in the furnace of battle, the Clone Wars began. Liberation of Ryloth After the destruction of Republic forces over Ryloth, and its subsequent invasion, political pressure was placed on the Republic military to take the Twi'leks homeward back, in anticipation of a counterattack under High Generals Windu and Kenobi, you were given orders to sneak past the blockade. You were to analyse the situation, link up with local resistance, and provide information on Separatist strongholds. Unfortunately, after suffering complications on infiltration, you were hunted across the planet until your team faced your deaths. Afterwards, political divisions were found among the native resistance, which exacerbated the difficulty of arranging a planet-wide uprising. But you did what you could, taking part in the liberation of the planet, Though you never received the galaxy-wide plaudits that Windu, Kenobi, or Skywalker did. But for your part in their story, Ryloth will remember you. Ruins of Renvar Kenobi and Skywalker were in an odd spot of trouble. Allegedly, Count Dooku was looking for an old Sith superweapon, and this led him to the icy world of Renvar. The business of the superweapon was Kenobi and Skywalker's business, the Council made that clear. Against a much larger Separatist force, Kenobi ordered you to infiltrate the droid lines via the ruins, find the droid command centers, and disable all anti-aircraft systems so that the Republic could bring their fighters to bear. After that, you were to retrieve as much information about the droid dispositions as you could, then exfiltrate back to Republic lines to assist the offensive. After the battle, Skywalker was not too forthcoming about the superweapon. With some time before you were shipped off-world, Kenobi stated that you had some time to examine the ruins, if you wished. Medical Mission Deciding upon a new strategy, the Separatists decided to launch raids upon med centres across the Republic. You were stationed to the medical centre near Ortsestus, charged with healing or protecting the tens of thousands of wounded Republic soldiers there. Despite its strategic importance, only a token defence was present from an overstretched Republic Navy, command hoping that its seclusion would provide security. Surely enough, the Separatists launched their attacks, However, they instead attacked constantly with minimal forces, exhorting the station's occupants, putting them always on alert, and forcing them to do their utmost to save the wounded. Eventually, the Separatists launched an all-out attack on the station, bringing it to the brink of destruction before the arrival of a relief fleet. Drowned in the Mud The mud of Jabim chewed up and spat out every clone, soldier and Jedi the Republic dispatched. A critical mining world wracked by civil war, you and a team of Jedi and Ark Troopers were dispatched to the planet to attempt to break the deadlock after the apparent death of Obi-Wan Kenobi. The beleaguered forces there did not care what you brought to the table. Physical acumen, tactical ability, healing skills or subterfuge, only that this rain some disaster be dealt with, one way or another. As Jedi Knight after Jedi Knight met their end on the former mining planet, the situation turned desperate. One day, the Republic would leave Jabim, hope drowned in the mud, and his losses in clone, Jedi and material unmatched. Looking back, you may have left some part of you there as well, forgotten in the mire. Slahiron Subterfuge The trade world of Slahiron sits on the junction of the Pablo Hutter and Satiron Hyperlanes. Though his main export is slaves, plenty of commerce goes through Slahiron en route to Nar Shaddaa. Sources and heart space indicated that a shipment of what were purported to be Jedi relics would be passing through. These items, Though not identified, were allegedly salvaged from unknown worlds in the Outer Rim. Simultaneously, a secret shipment of what were marketed as Force Sensitives would be passing through, its destination or buyer unknown. Consequently, the Jedi Council dispatched to Hut's space with the mission of acquiring the relics and freeing the slaves by whatever means necessary, be it covert, diplomatic, or ultimately violent. Having done so, you were to take them back to Coruscant. If time allowed, you were to additionally identify the relics. 
evacuating Duro. The Separatists pushed towards the inner rim, caught the Republic by surprise. Duro, underdefended by a few green forces, fell quickly. As the fighting in General Grievous's orbital bombardment kicked up toxic fumes and chemicals into the air, the Duro's homeworld surface became increasingly hellish. Casualties, both military and civilian, rose distressingly. Desperate, the Jedi Council diverted you from your planned mission. With haste, they dispatched you to run the CIS blockade and make it to Duro. There you were to coordinate the fighting retreat of the Republic forces, and arrange the evacuation of Republic forces and civilian populace planet side as best you could, before the Separatists overran everything. Duro was lost, and in the ensuing months she ran from system to system, trying to blunt General Grievous' charge towards the Core Worlds. Final Mission the slow, methodical path you are taking seems to be working. You feel much calmer now, and you can sense that you have entered a healing trance, a balm to your sore body. As you bathe in the warmth of the Force, you recall why you were here in the first place, even if this was not your intended finishing point. As the war continued, it appeared to go nowhere by its third year. With the Republic bogged down in the Outer Rim sieges, and the Separatist thrust towards the core halted, it seemed as if the war would enter an attrition-based phase, as the early months of the year passed, you embarked upon your last final mission. Choose one final mission from this section. Hidian Counterattack The critical Hidian Way hyperspace route is the Aorta of the Republic, one severed by the Separatist heartland centred around Count Dugas' homeworld of Serrano. Major economic centres and shipyards stand astride the way, whereas like Salonon, Junction and Botajev, and other CIS strongholds critical to the Separatist war effort. Republic High Command, tired of Separatist incursions, ordered a counterattack up the Hidian Way to relieve pressure off the core. They boasted that they would teach the CIS the meaning of fear, and that if the CIS could strike towards Coruscant with impunity, so too could the Republic towards Serrano. Home of the Jedi The ancestral home of the Jedi has been lost to the order for centuries, with only conflicting reports left in the Jedi archives and in galactic memory. As the war turned for the worse, and as public opinion moved against the Jedi, the Jedi Council deliberated. Eventually it was decided to dispatch certain trusted Jedi to search for the birthplace of the Order, to find some place where the Jedi could establish themselves as a future contingency. Indeed, perhaps some place where the Order could reforge its connection with the Force again, a haven where the Jedi could finally pierce through the shadow that had been obscuring their vision for years. Coruscant You are on Coruscant, investigating the anomalous behaviour of clones and tracking down leads of the Dark Lord when it happened. Untold numbers of Separatist forces flooded the system, battering the Republic in space and planet side, hoping to end the war in one fell strike. Urgently recalled to the Temple, the Order threw everything it had, you included, into the battle, the largest you have ever experienced. Wounded during the battle, you recuperated in Coruscant afterwards. By the time you had healed, you were about to leave for your next mission, when it all happened. Fate. Ah yes, you remember now. It was called Order 66, a contingency order of the Grand Army of the Republic declaring all Jedi traitors, issued to the clones and reinforced by the later declaration of a new order. It marched you and your fellow Jedi as enemies of the state, marked for death. You felt the shock in the Force as your friends and former acquaintances fell to the blast fire of the clones they led into battle. The fear when they were cut down by the Sith Lord's new apprentice. With the death of the Jedi, in the death of the Republic. Using the justification of a perverted Jedi coup, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine declared the formation of a new order. The Galactic Empire was born from the Galactic Republic, an autocracy under his head. Though you did not know for certain, there was enough evidence and whispers in the Force to conclude that Palpatine was none other than Darth Sidious, the Sith Lord from the Shadows all along. Had you all been so foolish then, to fail to see the wolf already in the sheepfold? Had the Order been so complacent that it had failed to see what was right before them? Had the Force abandoned the Order? Or had the Order abandoned the Force in the first place? Had all the bloodshed and toil been for naught? Regardless, you are now a fugitive, your lightsaber a mark of your criminal status. For all you and the Jedi may have done for the galaxy, you will find little respite in the years to come. Of 10,000 Jedi, some say less than 100 have survived, some say even fewer. Fewer more will survive the dark times to come. As the Force aches with the death of so many swept away in an instant, I wonder what your fate will be. Choose one fate. Fight. This new order is a disgrace to the Republic. 
that a Sith Lord rules over it makes it an even greater perversion. As defenders of the Republic, of the weak and downtrodden, the Jedi are committed to the defeat of Sidious and the restoration of the Republic. You know that as long as hope flickers, you are not alone. You committed yourself fully, whether through direct attack on Imperial assets, cooperation with local resistance or through other means, but you swore that one day, a new Republic or Jedi Order would blossom again. Perhaps you bade your time until after the initial phase of the Purge, perhaps you did not. There was to be no reprieve from the Emperor's henchmen, but you were unafraid. Survive. You can no longer be complacent. No one everything in the galaxy could be out to kill you. You have friends out there, you think, you hope, but they are far from here. The force is even more clouded now and disinformation litters the air. You cannot commit to one strategy or another, not without further knowledge, yes you fall into one trap or another. You survived as best you could, carrying not of whatever form that took. Whether forever on the run or in hiding, whether with allies or alone, you let the reality of the situation and the force dictate your next move. And after that, that's for your future self to decide. Hide. Order 66 and how it occurred is evidence that it is far too dangerous for a Jedi to reveal themselves. That a Jedi cannot trust the people of the galaxy as they used to, or perhaps themselves, or the Order's teachings. With the Order shattered, and yourself exhausted in body and in mind, you sought shelter from the storm, running from system to system. One day, you found a place and settled down. Somewhere where you could keep your lightsaber hidden away, perhaps along with your vows. Where you could attempt to understand the Force, now that you knew the Jedi had forgotten. Somewhere far away from the rest of the galaxy. Far from the Sith. Far from the Empire. 4. Order 66 exposed weaknesses in the Order. Or did it merely exploit cracks that had been appearing for years? Was the Order too weak? Or was it the Jedi themselves? Complacency is weakness, and the Order was complacent for sure. Give in, it whispered incessantly. Give in. You fell. It may have been slow, gradual, the result of intensifying rage and despair. It may have been faster, the pain and injections being too difficult for you to handle. Perhaps you did so willingly, perhaps you were compelled. Dark Jedi, Inquisitor, or Dark Side Adept. One thing was clear. You were no longer a Jedi. Trust in the Force. This is Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning, and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. Do not return to the Temple. That time has passed, and our future is uncertain. We will each be challenged. Our trust, our faith, our friendships. But we must persevere, and, in time, a new hope will emerge. May the Force be with you, always. You will trust in the Force, and go wherever it leads you. There is no emotion, there is peace. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no chaos, there is harmony. There is no death, there is the Force. As you leave for unknown climes, you reach out once more with the Force. Though it is still turbulent, you can feel the currents of sadness dying down. Force signatures fade away whether through death or intentional shielding. You do not know how many others will survive, and in time you may very well be the last of your kind. Perhaps, if you have the time, you might make a holocron of your own, so that any generations there may be to come can learn from your mistakes. And perhaps, if you do not survive, then perhaps your story, your history, shall. You walk off into the sunset, certain of one thing. The Force will be with you, always. Complete a build or write a short excerpt for plus 15 points. You should have finished this Choose Your Own Adventure with zero or more points. Though the setting laid out in the Choose Your Own Adventure is recommended, any alterations to the course of the storyline are the reader's fiat.